Oklahoma, it's Big 12 Conference Football. Kia Sarah presents College Football Saturday. And today, the fourth ranked Oklahoma Sooners play host to the Oklahoma State Cowboys in the 96th edition of the Bedlam Series. Well, just a couple of days ago, it seemed like a fairly clear picture in the BCS standings. But that all changed yesterday. Nebraska pounded by Colorado. Miami later tonight against Washington and Oklahoma facing their in state rivals, the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers along with James Lofton and welcome to Norman, Oklahoma. James James, it's interesting the way things have developed over the last couple of days because now the BCS standings up in the air more than ever. Yeah, but I've got to take you back a year ago when Miami felt like they were left out of the dance totally. Now Oklahoma finds itself in a similar position. They have to hope that today's performance is impressive enough and that Florida doesn't leapfrog over them into that number two slot. It isn't often we talk about a defensive player for Heisman Trophy <laughs> consideration, but that can be the case for the strong safety, the playmaker for the Oklahoma Sooners, Roy Williams. Yeah, off last two seasons, you had an ankle injury last week and Josh Fields stepped in and the coaching staff was really impressed with his calmness and how he handled the situation. It's a clear, crisp autumn afternoon, a very windy one. The 96th edition of the Bedlam Series. We are ready to go on classic setting. The Sooners and the Cowboys. Big 12 South Division title on the line for Oklahoma. Oklahoma, the Big 12 Conference, and the matchup between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Down to the sideline, third member of our team, Eric Clements. Eric. All right, Joel, I got a favor to ask of you viewers out there. Don't leave your TVs in special team situations. Both these teams can strike in a hurry. Let's start with Oklahoma's Antoine Savage. He threw a touchdown pass in a game against Kansas State off a fake punt. He averages 31.6 yards on kickoff returns with a touchdown this year. He's like lightning. So is OSU's Chris Massey, who's performed even better, leading the conference and the nation with a whopping 36.8 kickoff return average. We've been told by his coaches, hey, this kid could block a punt and return it for a touchdown in the game and return a kickoff for a touchdown in the game as well. Hey, we're ready for football as the continuation of the Bedlam Series about set to get started here at Owen Field. We'll be back with the opening kickoff college football Saturday coming right back at you in just a moment. James Lofton. And Eric Clements, Les Miles, finally got that one off his back. His first conference win last week against Baylor, 38-22. First season as the Cowboys head coach. Bob Stoops, he's never lost at home since taking over the Oklahoma program. What a role this group is on. Former defensive coordinator at K-State, also at Florida. There's a nice, interesting tie in there with Florida, who's battling in the BCS standings for one of the top two spots. I don't think there's any love lost. Once you leave a program, you throw away all that old Florida sweatshirts and the T-shirts and the hats, and you just wear the Sooner Red after that. Well, Oklahoma, James, wanted the win. So they their option was to take the win. Oklahoma State is going to have their option again in the second half. They defer to Oklahoma. And Tim Duncan is going to keep it on the ground. It'll be brought back by Massey. Nation's leader Eric Clemens just talking about him, and he shut down. 37-yard average, and he goes down at the 15. So even though Duncan was down away, he kept it on the ground. Keasera starting 11. Pokai will get the start, but we're going to see the other young man, Josh Fields, as well. Eaton, Machado, Vandrell. Phillips and Russell, good group up front. A group that's been together all year. Bell in the backfield, Burrows the fullback, Lewis coming off a great day. Rashawn Woods, leader in the Big 12 in receiving yardage. And Milosevic is the tight end. So the Cowboys, long field of their own 15. And not close. He was looking for Rashawn Woods, the sophomore from Oklahoma City. Guy that's averaging just about 90 yards a game. And this is truly one of the best defensive units in the country. The 4-3, Heineke, Klein, Harris, and Wilkerson. Wilkerson's been so solid in the second half. Moore, Lehman, and Rocky Kalmus, the Buckus Award candidate. And in the defensive secondary, Straight and Perkins on the corner. Roy Williams, one safety spot. Brandon Everage, the other. Bogai on the edge. And almost intercepted and taken in. Grabbing the ball. It was Rajon Woods sliding down. It looked like Perkins had a shot at it as well. You know, nice move by Mike Gundy, the offensive coordinator, to get Pogai out of the pocket because all the reports came out and said, okay, Pogai's a guy with a bum ankle. He's not going to be able to move. He's going to be a sitting duck in the pocket. And what they do, they run him automatically out of the pocket. And that left ankle, you'll see as the game goes on, is heavily taped up. 
That high ankle sprain. He got. He keeps Tatum Bell in the backfield, working out of the gun. Forget about the ankle sprain. He calls his own number on a quarterback draw. James across the 32. Yeah, but but a nice change of pace because I think when Oklahoma kicked off, they said we're going to roll our defense out there. We'll get a three and out. We'll get field position. We may end up with the ball around midfield, but. Oklahoma State has done a nice job. You saw the rollout, got a first down there, and now a change of pace with a quarterback draw by Oso Poga. Second and seven, close to the 33. Tatum Bell popped at the 35. Brandon Evers, the free safety, getting the stick on him early. Well, we're talking about the defense of Oklahoma. In total defense, they're third best in the nation, giving up just 256 yards of offense a game. Eighth best against the run and sixth lowest in holding opponents. Only 13 and a half points a contest. Rocky Callis, Roy Williams, the leaders, the catalyst. But they make plays that turn the course of ball games. And there you see Brent Venables and Mike Stoops on the sideline, the co-defensive coordinators. Empty backfield for the Cowboys. What hands by Bogai. And do they convert? Woods? Yes, as he breaks the tackle. Rashawn Woods, exceptional catch, and then an extra three. Downstairs we go to Eric Clemens. Eric? That's right, Joel. You know, it's going to be tough to throw the ball when you're going against this 25 mile an hour north wind. Folks at OU say, hey, it's windy like this down here all the time. We're used to it. But when you're a visiting team and you got to throw into the teeth of a 25 mile an hour wind or even punt into it, don't expect Oso Pogai to even throw anything over about 10 yards downfield against a wind like this. But the key is to throw the ball aggressively. And he does have a strong arm that can knife through the wind. First down, Oklahoma State at the 42. Pressure, they get a chip, but they also get the quarterback jump ball. And a dual possession, it's taken down. An interception coming down with a Derek Strait. He took it away from the wide receiver. Wilkerson got to the quarterback for the pressure. I talked about this defense being able to make plays that change the course of a ball game. Here's Kalmus on the blitz. He gets a piece of Pogai, a big piece of Pogai, right in the middle. Most guys just go up, they put their hands up. That ball looked like it was on the ground before Derek Strait wrestled it away from Rashawn Woods. So now the Sooners first and 10. Ball at their own 39-yard line. They have done such a great job in taking the ball away and then capitalizing. Points off turnovers, 91 to 34 over their opponents this year. Hibble out of the gun. Pocket collapses. And the first sack of the game belongs to Greg Richmond, the sophomore from Oklahoma City at Douglas High School. Offensively, Hibble, the junior, the transfer from the University of Georgia out of Hazelhurst, Georgia. Behind Romero, Duncan Carter, the true freshman Skinner, and Gerard Fields. Griffin in the backfield. Norman coming off an 11-catch game with Fagan and Clayton, the other two wideouts. And Trent Smith, the record-setting tight end, the junior from Clinton, Oklahoma. Griffin, the only one in the backfield after a loss of six. Pressure on the shovel, Griffin. Breaking tackles, and he's got the first down. Well-timed shovel pitch. That's 29 straight games now. The Griffins caught a pass. And I talked to Mark Mangino before the ball game down on the field, and I said, what makes Quentin Griffin so good? He said his ability to read his blockers. Freeze it right there. He has a wall of blockers in front of him. Now, a lot of guys would just run straight up into that. He doesn't do that. He reads the leverage on each and every man. He does it so quickly, it's almost like a computer just scanning, looking for the spot to go in. And that's what separates him from a lot of running backs who probably have better physical dimensions skill-wise than he does. Three minutes gone by, James, already. Plenty of activity on both sides offensively, and it's thrown behind Mark Clayton, the redshirt freshman from Arlington, Texas. And you're talking about Mark Mangino. This young man forced his way into the lineup, according to their offensive coordinator. KSR first 11. Richmond, Brown, and Williams, along with Kareem Smith, who leads the team in sacks up front. It's a 4-2-5. Robinson and Levels. Levels, the leading tackler for the squad at linebacker. Williams, what a day he had. We'll talk about it. Jones, Craig, Massey, and Jones on the other corner, comprising the secondary. Second and ten after the incompletion. 
And do you think the Buffaloes of Colorado are watching this game just a little bit, including their head coach, Gary Barnett? I think Barnett. It might be mandatory film study for the team. A little later, we're going to try to hook up. Fox Sportsnet! And we do love coming to Northern Oklahoma. Where they've not lost over the last two plus seasons under Bob Stoops, 17 0, and now the Sooners come out. Second and 10 at the Cowboys, 43 after the turnover. The interception by Derek Strait. Most of the Big 12 force this year by the Sooners. At least one in 24 of the last 26. But the defense has also scored in seven of the last 14 games. Quick one to the outside. Not much there, though, for the wide receiver. It was Josh Norman who grabbed 11 last week to tie a record. Now, so much of this offense is predicated on the short pass and the long run after it. So, obviously, if you're Oklahoma State, you come into this ball game saying, we cannot miss tackle. And if the first guy misses a little, you've got to slow him down until the rest of the guys can get there and help out. So now third and four. And they capitalize on the turnover. Pressure on Hibble in trouble. No time at all. Heat in the face of the quarterback. And it's going to be a punting situation. And Oklahoma loves to take big splits. And when you take big splits, what you're trying to do is keep the outside corner rush from getting you. But what Oklahoma State has done, they've countered, and they've come right up the middle. And that's really where you want to attack this offense. Now, when you do that, then you sacrifice one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Tough to read that guy's face today. Mark Mangino. Now they're going to go for a long field goal from Tim Duncan, who's made 10 straight because the wind is at their back. I talked to Duncan before the ball game, and he said the wind at your back here averages about an extra 10 yards of distance. So his long for the year 47, this would have been 55, but and it's a pooch. A pooch instead. And can the Sooners cover it? No. Two were down there. They lost sight of the football, though. So a break for the Cowboys. When we come back, they are going to have it. First and 10 at their own 20. They're not burned after that interception by the Sooners. I mean, the practice field here. Now, that field actually goes east to west. But the game field where they play every day is a north and south field. So this wind is totally different than what they're used to seeing at practice. And today, Gustine James at about 25 miles an hour as they dump it off to the fullback who can't get out of the set. Mike Denard, the junior from Oakland, California. Teddy Lehman all over that situation with a flag down to the play. Yeah, we've got a hold in the backfield. And, and sometimes you don't take into account what a great player does to an offensive line. Tommy Harris, one-on-one -on -one against John Vandrill, a senior against the true freshman. You've got to grab this guy. He is so good, number 97. Handling against the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Now, how good is Harris going to be once he grows up? <laughs> that is a scary thought. 6'3", 275. As you mentioned, only 18 years old out of Colleen, Texas. His coaches say he's simply a great player. And surprisingly, Oklahoma doesn't play that many guys defensively. They don't go that deep. Tatum Bell makes a miss in the backfield. Nifty run by Bell. Almost a first down. He gets close to 19 on the carry. Roy Williams barely got a piece of him. He got away from Kalmus in the backfield. This defense prides itself on not missing tackles. Kalmus has a run through. Bell locked in his sights. Tatum Bell makes a miss. Go back a year ago, Tatum Bell, 60-yard touchdown run against his Sooner defense in a 12-7 ball game that was really dominated by Oklahoma defensively. But one play made the difference in the ball game. We've talked about the quarterback controversy coming in, alternating the two, but Bell could be the key to keep Oklahoma's defense honest all day. For the first down, Bell with a nice pirouette, and then pays Roy Williams, lays him out. He pops back up, but did Williams ever set him up? When you do the spin move, boy, it looks awfully pretty, but you have to realize you take your vision away from the defense. Roy Williams locks up, but you know what I like at the end of the play? There are a lot of players around the country who would have said, okay, look at me, look at what I just did. Roy Williams just kind of gets up, puts his hands up just for a no moment, but he says, no, 
A Heisman guy wouldn't do that. I like your point because he got away yeah. from the man immediately. He didn't stand over him either. But he makes those type of tackles week in and week out also. First down as they got the yard, yard and a half. Bo guy has it batted right back down. Coming up with the play, Corey Heineke, the left hand, the senior from Edmond, Oklahoma. He timed it perfectly because he's not that tall. He's only 6'1". Well, tomorrow, another full day of NFL activity, beginning with the undisputed champion of free game shows, Fox NFL Sunday. The two offensive powerhouses colliding with Jeff Garcia and the 49ers look to keep pace in the NFC West. They'll battle Peyton Manning and the Colts. Ricky Williams with the Saints taking to the Patriots. Coverage all starts. Noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, right here on Fox. Nothing doing on the ground for Tatum Bell, the sophomore from DeSoto, Texas. Rocky Kalma staying at home, the linebacker. Haven't heard that at all this year. Now, is Peyton Manning back on solid food yet? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Boy, he got his jail jaw nailed a couple of weeks ago. You know, it's interesting when you talk about the Bedlam series, and this is the 96th edition. Or is it? Well, it's it. we have brought one school says 95, another says 96. <laughs> one thing that. we do know, though, Oklahoma State's only won 14 times. 75 yeah. wins for Oklahoma. But seven of the 14 have come right here for the Cowboys. You know, maybe it was a ball club from Oklahoma State that went up there and played Oklahoma one year, and they weren't really a team. They lock up Roy Williams on the blitz and shoot it wide of John Lewis, the intended target. You know what? I think if you're going to try and throw the football, using the middle of the field is probably better because the ball is not going to be as affected by the wind. Once you start throwing it sideways, it's going to move, it's going to flutter, it's going to be off target more often than not. So ball's right in front of you. Go ahead. Use that if you can. Curtis Fagan waiting for the punt. This will be an adventure. Scott Elder into that 20 plus mile an hour win. No pressure on Elder. Boy, he nailed that. He did get in. Staying away from the over the shoulder play. That may be the best we see all day in this win. What a play. Oklahoma will have it for the second time with 90 yards separating them from the end zone. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By Kia Zero, one company, countless solutions. By Nissan, driven. By Microsoft XP, yes, you can. And by WebMD, health has a home page. The North Oval on the campus, saluting Native Americans here in <laughs> Oklahoma. See those shoes on the back of it said, oh, who? Sooners back at their own 10 yard line. Quentin Griffin, the only one back there with Hibbelin, two to each side. Setting up the middle screen to the flanker. Well played on the pitch to Mark Clayton. Short gain, and a very interested observer joins us now. And Coach Gary Barnett of the Colorado Buffaloes, first of all, congratulations. Joel Myers along with James Lofton and Eric Clemens. Huge victory yesterday, Coach. Well, thank you. Uh, our, our guys played hard, and we, uh, we got on them fast and held on because the it was a shootout, I can tell you that. Now, Gary, an offensive team. Gary, I know you talked to us earlier in the year, and you said, you know, our goal is still within sight. Even after you lost to Texas, you knew that if you were able to win out and face that big matchup against Nebraska in the season ender, that you could still get to the Big 12 championship game. Well, we, we knew that, but we had, you know, we, had to, we had to win some games in there, and we had to do it without a lot of players. But uh, we kept having guys step up and, and make plays and play well. It came out of nowhere. And, uh, you know, it was sort of sort of who we've become, and and we've been able to play pretty physically up front, uh, especially on offense. Now we saw the host of running backs, but how about the play of your quarterback, Bobby Pesavento, coming in after your starter was injured? Yeah, he's been unbelievable, hasn't he? I mean, uh, just just five straight games almost for him. Starting, with, he, you know, he played well at Texas, and we just didn't play well around him. But uh, uh, he, he's just played terrific. You know, He's just a part of the team, part of the team part. Well, coaches, we get ready for the Big 12 championship game. It's either going to be, as you're the Big 12 North title holder, against Oklahoma if they win today, or Texas. And you know what you saw from Texas. Does it make any difference to you? Not really. You know, we're just uh, want to represent the North, and uh, our goal to get there and play in this game and, and win it. And uh, so it doesn't make any difference. I think 
playing Texas again would would, uh, would probably be exciting for the players. They, they'd like to have that, but uh, it really makes no difference. Just a little motivation for you, Coach. Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations once again. 415 yards of offense in the first half. I didn't think anybody could do that against Nebraska's defense. Continued success. Keep the guys healthy. We'll do it. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Coach Gary Barnett. Time out on the field. We'll come right back to Norman. No score so far. State hanging tough with the fourth ranked Sooners. Championship game in the future of the Sooners and head coach Bob Stoops. One number that really stands out for Stoops. Nine and one since he's taken over. The Sooners are nine and one against top ten teams. Tatum Bell looking for first down yardage. He gets eight. And it's interesting because they have been able to move the ball against this Oklahoma defense. They've gotten a first down, at least one first down on each of their first two possessions. And the numbers so impressive what they've done against ranked opponents. And I think it should be PRBS up here for 1994 to 1998 because that's before Bob Stoops came yes. on the scene. And they really have been impressive. He always has his team ready to play well, but Oklahoma State responds to this big game in this Bedlam series. Second and a deuce. Cracking it. He swores. Or make it to Nard, the junior from Oakland, once again. Did he get enough for the first down? I think he got just over the marker, but a nice job by Brandon Everidge and not letting him get those extra yards after the first initial contact. This is a very young group of Oklahoma Sooners. Here they won the national championship last year. And they've only got out of their first 44, James, seven seniors in their two deep chart. Well, the funny thing is, and you talk to Bob Stoops and you say, well, how's your team? And, you know, he'll give you a State of the Union address. But he always says that we're not a real deep team. And when you do the depth chart for his defensive unit, there's no backup at right corner. There's no backup at middle linebacker. This Brandon Moore, who's a starter at the strong linebacker, actually backs up Teddy Lehman and Rocky Calma. Yes. So it's not a deep unit. And within that unit, there are three, four true freshmen. So there's a lot of young talent. Another first down for Oklahoma State. We're just about halfway through and falling down his pole guy. So he loses yardage, never had his balance coming away from center. Now you wonder if a guy with a high ankle sprain got a lot of playing time this week at practice. And that's a two tight end set that they had and a little different. It has Oklahoma confused and you can see all that extra stuff. Well, he wasn't supposed to move there. I'm trying to circle his left ankle for him. But I mean, it looks like there's a cast on his left ankle. He's already set a new Oklahoma State record. Single season mark, 177 completions coming in today. After the loss, the incompletion. Tried to get it to John Lewis, who had seven for 131 yards last week. Well, we thought we would see Josh Fields within the second or third series, the true freshman. And it's interesting because Mike Stoops told us that they consider Fields a little bit better athletically when he pulls it down, yeah, more and, so than Pogai, and, and forget about the ankle. And Fields isn't a true runner, but he's a little bit of a better runner than Pogai. Neither guy is going to run the option and pull an Eric Crouch on you. But they're both mobile enough. And I always thought that Pogai, with his size, could bowl over some people. On third and 13, high on the slant, another interception. Derek Straits got his second. Oklahoma inside the 40 of the Cowboys. I talked about trying to gun the ball through the wind. That's exactly what Oso Pogai does here. Watch him wind up, and he really guns that ball, and it just doesn't come down. I don't know if it got tipped at the line of scrimmage, but it goes right through the receiver's hands. And Derek Strait is a guy who, you know, you, you, you watch everybody else on this team of superstars, and you forget about it. But people don't complete passes against him, and now he's added to his interception total for the season. He had one coming in, and that gives him three for the year. But they didn't capitalize the last time. I mentioned 91 points off turnovers coming into the game to only 34 for their opponents this year. Watch this guy right here, Trent Smith, the tight end. They haven't found him yet. They've gone in his direction once. Pocket holds up. Instead, the wide receiver, Curtis Fagan, the junior from Houston. And good yardage on first down. They get about six. 
the last year Sooners matching up with the Cowboys State down by five but driving for a score late in the fourth quarter Poe guy firing into the end zone incomplete batted away by who else Derek Straits preserving a perfect Sooner season on their way to the national title and that was a great matchup because Derek Strait 5'11 was matched up against a six foot five inch mobile tight end and he showed that hey he could probably do that 360 dunk that a lot of people talk about Hibble. Good pocket protection and almost intercepted after the deflection up front. Getting his hands on the ball looked like Greg Richmond, the left end. Part of the reasons why you use the wide offensive splits is once again to keep the end rushers outside of you, but also to give your quarterback a lane to throw the football through. Well, when Smith comes across the middle, he's only about two yards deep, so his separation between where he's going and where the defensive lineman, it just wasn't great enough to allow Hibble room to throw the football. But oh, 40% on the season. Hibble on his way. The corner, Marcus Jones in safety with the sack. And even with that great field position again, no first down on three snaps for yeah. Oklahoma. One of the great advantages of this 4-2-5 defense is you put playmakers like Marcus Smith, Jones rather, in position to make plays. You get good coverage down the field. There's a guy open here, but that's after the quarterback is on his back. And I like the candor of Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma State. He goes, most of the time we're in a nickel anyway, so we might as well open it a 4-2-5. And, and those extra guys, those safeties, are close to linebacker size anyways. Ferguson, pitching it, boy. First team all Big 12 last year, should be once again one of the best in the nation. And he puts it out at the Cowboys six. Well, the Big 12 South Division title is on the line. For the Oklahoma Sooners who win today, they're matching up with Colorado. In bowl games. Is there any question? The Big 12 is one of the top two conferences in college football this year. There's a the true freshman from Stillwater High School. Good spot for him, huh? Josh <laughs> Fields back at his own six. Wrapping up the running back, Jimmy Wilkerson, the sophomore from Omaha, Texas. So Josh Fields, 10 of 18 last week, his first real duty. And did he ever come through, leading Les Miles and the Cowboys, James, to their first Big 12 victory for Les. An emotional win at Baylor. Through for a couple of touchdown passes. And he is probably in the loudest part of the stadium, although there are some Oklahoma State fans there who are being nice and quiet for him. Bell doing a good job just to get back the lost yardage, the three. And it's going to bring up third and ten average with free safety coming up to help out Wilkerson. And, and you see it often when running backs are trying to fight for that extra yardage that the ball will pop free. And this is a place on the football field where you don't want to cover it up with two arms because when you do that, you, you can't run. And you're not going to hit the hole as quickly as you should. But ball security is important. You want to keep that ball up against the numbers on your uniform and actually rub the ball across your chest. You don't want to flail it out in the open. Tight formation. They'll keep it to the ground for Bell. He won't get back to the line. Cut off at the pass, and once again, Jimmy Wilkerson all over it. He started the season at Stormside linebacker. Then they moved him to rush in. What a phenomenal player. And Jimmy Wilkerson along with Tommy Harris. You know, everybody thought that this defense was good last year. They beat Florida State 13 to 2 in the national championship game. But he said, actually, we're playing better this year than we did last year. Fagan wasn't back far enough for the last one from Scott Elder. A huge punt by Elder. Now, out of his own end zone. Win knocked it down that time. And it's going to be way down to the 35 of the Cowboys. Well, don't forget to join us. Josh Fields because he looks right first. And, you know, you may think he's looking him off. But actually, on the line of scrimmage, Roy Williams was lined up like he was going to blitz. So if I'm a quarterback, I'm looking at Roy Williams going, okay, this is the guy who just knocked my running back crazy. I don't want him hitting me. Tata Bell can't get around the corner. Tommy Harris, the true freshman. Two well, run well for a guy that's 6'3", 275. And, and it's really not fair the way that he's able to move with the size that he has. And what they do, they line him up on the center. The center has to snap the ball, so one hand is already removed. And he is 
so quick that he moves before that center can then get his replacement hand on him, and he's gone and into the backfield. You know, he probably won't get any bigger. He'll get a little faster. He'll replay better. But, I mean, this guy's at the top of his game, Tommy Harris. Final minute of the first 15. Fields calling his own. Quarterback draw. Across the 35, near the 36. Got the lost yardage back. Teddy Lehman, who they said now is falling into the Rocky Calmus mode. He's playing that well, and everything's coming naturally to him. Made the stop that time on Josh Fields. Well, you, you always hear a player's greatest strength is their greatest weakness. Lehman runs 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, in the 40. So with that type of speed, sometimes he has a tendency to go too fast and to overrun plays. And he almost needs to say, okay, slow it down, 1,001, 1,002, then go get it. He was a great sprinter in high school, finishing second of the 2A state finals in the 100 meters. Young man out of Fort Gibson, Oklahoma, and that's going to be the final snap of the first quarter. So the defensive units dominating so far. Three interceptions already between the two teams, two belonging to the Sooners of Oklahoma, the fourth-ranked team of the nation, and some serious pops as well. We've seen them already. Strong safety, Roy Williams. James Laughlin, a surprise so far with the way Nate Hibble has mm -hmm. taken over this offense the last three games, hitting 70% of his passes. You'd figure there'd be some points on the board, especially field position-wise, for the Sooners. Yeah, but I think the guys up the road in Stillwater said, this is our national championship game. This is a bowl game for us. It doesn't get any bigger, and this is for bragging rights in the state. And even if you don't win, you at least want to show up and say, okay, yeah, we were able to slow them down last year, 12-7, and we came within a hiccup of upsetting the national champion. Our FedEx air and ground numbers displaying how difficult it has been to move the football. As we begin the second quarter, Oklahoma State looking at third and a little less than 10 with their true freshman at quarterback Josh Fields moving the pocket by design. Good arm, but nowhere close. Woods well covered on the play. They don't, as we see Oklahoma go so often to two and four wide receiver, three and four wide receiver sets. Oklahoma State doesn't have that luxury, do they? No, they really don't. And sometimes when you roll, you cut down half the field, and against a team that has such great speed defensively, I don't know if you want to take away half your field options. Fagan's been busy. Will they get a chance to handle one? Elder coming in with almost a 43-yard average with a wind at his back. Will he want to try and handle it is the question. Into the end zone it goes. Boy, that's like when you're, you know, playing golf in Denver. You only need a three-wood off the tee. <laughs> Down with Elder. A long one. Coming up later tonight, college basketball takes center stage. Rick Pitino leading the Louisville Cardinals against the Oregon Ducks. It all comes your way from the Rose Garden in Portland. And our coverage on Fox Sports Net starts at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, right here on Fox Sports Net. Steve Fiziak, Marcus Johnson with the call. Now that must be a big game if they're not going to play at the pit on campus in Oregon. They're taking this up to Portland in the Rose Garden. Big time. That's about a two-hour drive for the locals. With the way things have been going for the Blazers, they'll have some fun at the Rose Garden tonight. Now, what about the offense of Oklahoma? Plenty of time for Hibble. Trent Smith, the tight end, finally gets one. Their leading receiver, that is his 57th grab. He leads all tight ends in the Big 12. And let's talk about these, the breakdown on the our Stanford graduate, the BCS points, partner. You know, I've actually seen how this thing works. There is a box like this. And in that box, there are a whole bunch of numbers. And what they do, they reach their arm into the box and they pull out a number, and that's how they get this number, that 8.13 right there. Well, I'm glad we went to you for your expert opinion. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, that's how I think they do it. Second and five from the 25 after the grab by Smith. Ooh, Going good, down good Josh grab. Norman. Josh Norman almost put it on the ground. He held on, though, the senior from Midland, Texas, Midland Lee High School, the same high school that gave the Texas Longhorns, Cedric Benson. So first down on two snaps. Now, they have Trent Smith, who's their true tight end, 
but Josh Norman has tight end size, so he provides a mismatch against anybody who they put him up against that time against Elbert Craig, number three. But good soft hands going down, getting that ball. 6'3", 233. The tight end is 6'5", 220. So who's the real tight end here? That is only the second first down of the contest for the Oklahoma Sooners. Pibble trying to buy some time, forget about it. On his way down, Loretta and Brown, the junior from White House, Texas, wouldn't let go, had him around the shoulder pads. And I talked to Mark Mangino, he said, we don't do a lot of audibleizing at the line of scrimmage when we see blitz. Most of our plays have a hot read, which means that a receiver would look at the pressure that's coming, and then he'd go hot. Well, in that time, they didn't have a hot read. They sent six guys with only five people to block them, and they were able to get to hip. Loss of about three, maybe four. Wide side of the field is flooded for Hibble. On the double clutch, intercepted, picked off, coming up with it. The Cowboys, Paul Jones, back up safety. And that's two picks apiece now. Marcus Jones had the other, Paul Jones with this one. Great job by Paul Jones in debating Nate Hipple. Paul Jones has the underneath coverage in the zone. And watch him appear out of that underneath coverage and pick the ball off. Nice job. And OK, you play your zone. But then you read the eyes of the quarterback and you locate the receivers who are coming into your area. The transfer from Northeast Oklahoma. Paul Jones with a second pick of the contest for Oklahoma State. And now by far the best field position of the entire game for the Cowboys. First time they'll have it in Sooners territory at the 46. Field stays in their quarterback. A little razzle-dazzle. The gadget play, nothing doing. Trying to get it downfield to John Lewis. What's the latest, Derek Clemens? I'm down here on the Oklahoma State sideline, and you know, with every defensive stand, with every turnover, it's kind of shades of last year. They get more and more confident going against the heavily favored Oklahoma Sooners. And of course, everybody's standing out here, and the crowd definitely quiet right now. Oklahoma needs to make a play and swing momentum its way, guys. Maybe it's something they ate. 71,000 <laughs> plus, and they've got standing room as well, so you're looking at close to 74, 75,000. It's going to be expanded by the 2003 season with close to 85,000. Lewis on the quarterback draw. Did he read his lane well? Nothing doing. Shut down at the 45. It'll bring up third and about nine. Dusty Dvorak over there, the freshman from Lake Dallas, Texas. Along with James Lofton and Eric Lettis, Joel Myers were in Norman, Oklahoma, the fourth-ranked Sooners, trying to get once again to the Big 12 title game. A matchup with Colorado next weekend at Texas Stadium in Irving. Will they do it? Last year, trying to get to a national championship game. They had problems with these Cowboys, barely winning 12-7 in Stillwater. Deflection again. Getting in there, Jimmy Wilkerson, who we've been talking about. They're timing the quarterback perfectly. I mean, they really are, and he's trying to get rid of the ball quickly, but they are such great athletes that while they're rushing the passer, they can keep their eyes on the passer and not get so occupied with the guy blocking them, they know when to put their hands up. Well, the Cowboy quarterbacks now won for their last eight combined. That's Poe Guy and Fields. But who would have believed at this juncture of the game, Oklahoma State would have five first downs compared to only two for the Sooners. Downwind, can Elder keep it in play? No. So the net on the punt, only 25 yards. A break for the Sooners after another turnover. They'll have it for the second consecutive time at their own 20-yard line. He was early in his career, this young man. He's trying to get the cheers right. He'll have a cold in the morning, we know that. But he's a Sooner. <laughs> First down, Oklahoma. No score so far, surprisingly. 12 minutes left in the half. A basic formation by Oklahoma standards. First time they've run the option, trying to get the running game going, but it doesn't work. Quick Griffin shut down, tried to throw in the corner. And it was Terrence Robinson, a strong side linebacker. Our gateway trivia, which former Oklahoma head coach and which former Oklahoma State head coach have won Super Bowls as NFL head coach as well. I think we've got a pretty good idea on one. Yep. 
hand, probably the other. It's not like it's ancient history. Nope. They both did it for the same owner. Did we come up with that this morning? <laughs> Second and eight from the 22. No rushing yards, as you can see, for the Sooners. Griffin makes a miss, though. Nifty move by the little guy. Got away from Terrence Robinson, the man who put him down on the previous play. And you saw the graphic, minus 15 yards rushing. Well, Oklahoma will tell you, every little dump-off pass that we throw to Quentin Griffin is the same as a run. And Griffin came in leading the ball club and rushing just over 750 yards and adding another 350 on the ground. Hasn't had the spectacular numbers that he had last year. He's been nicked up with a few injuries here and there. And Ronaldo works his backup has seen more playing time as a result. And he's capitalized recently. Hibble trying to get it. I don't think they I gave it to him. I don't think he got it either. No. They needed to get it past the 30. Kevin Williams stuffed the play. The junior from Fordyce, Arkansas. That's one of the disadvantages to this kind of finesse feather offense. You know, you're trying to spread the ball around and you do a lot of different things, but rarely do you work on your gold line in short yardage situations. And this is a play that should have been made, but Howard Duncan with that big split gets beaten across his face. Williams filled the gap nicely. The man for the Big 12 leader, Jeff Ferguson, the senior from Tulsa, they almost get to him. And to the win, he gets a great hop. It hits the sooner right at the 19. They'll bring it back. It hit the Sooners, Will Peoples, the reserve wide receiver, but close to disaster for Ferguson in Oklahoma. Almost a block for the Cowboys. What do they say in real estate? Location, location, location. Field position is important in this ballgame. Coming to play later in the day. As Oklahoma tries to first just get through the Dr. 12, Dr. Pepper Big 12 title <laughs> game. That's easy for you to say. And that is next weekend against the Colorado Buffalo. Sitting at home and sitting pretty after what they did. Peels oh, on a double got, move. Oh. He's got his man. Overshoots Rashawn Woods. What a beauty on that play. You know what? You're only going to get that shot once a game. Perkins bit. Yeah, he really did. Perkins is thinking, I've got interception number four. And then he's thinking, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. And that is such a hard ball to throw with the swirling wind. You know, it looks like the wind is going one way, then it'll swirl, it'll stop, it'll push it. And Perkins is thinking, well, I'm a cat. I got eight li lives left. Perkins is a former wide receiver, and he saw the end zone. Second and 10. Tatum Bell going nowhere. Teddy Lehman, the sophomore. Middle linebacker putting him down. And I talked about Teddy Lehman and his speed, and what he has to realize is that everyone else on the defense has a gap to fill. Let them fill their gaps, and I'll fill the remaining gap. And as a middle linebacker, you have to read the holes just like the running back does. And when your defensive lineman, Corey Klein, Tommy Harris, Palomin, when those guys are getting penetration, all you have to do is follow the running back. Lehman third on the team in stops. He's going considerably in the second half of the season. And now a third and ten. Heat in the face of Fields on the deflection. Another interception. Picked off by the Sooners. Matt McCoy deep in Oklahoma State territory, close to the 13. Each and every one of the five interceptions that we've had so far has been wind-related. There is enough wind on the football field that your hands don't seem to function as well. The ball comes out a little high. It stays high. It doesn't have the good spiral. This ball should have been caught by Mark Milosevic, but it's not. And you've seen the interceptions. Look at that ball. It looks like a punt coming down. Derek Strait pulls it out. And here's the ball off the hands of Rashawn Woods, a very reliable receiver. And there's a ball that gets batted up like a volleyball. And this game is going to hinge on the defense. And the wind still whipping at close to 25 miles an hour. Whoa. What a shot applied to Quentin Griffin coming over there. Marcus Jones, the strong safety, and Albert Craig, the free safety. 
And the wind, we've been talking about it right now, in the face of the Oklahoma Sooners. And it's blowing the same way on the field. And what you have to do as a coach, you have to manage your game. Okay, the wind is blowing. I know we're down in the red zone. We'd love to pass, but we've got to throw. I mean, we've got to run, rather. And that is not their strong suit. So how do they create passes that look like runs? I'd look for a shovel pass here. They had one successful earlier in the game for almost 20 yards to Quentin Griffin. Hibble overshooting in double coverage is wide receiver Mark Clayton. You know, but Clayton split that coverage. And granted, from up here, we don't feel any pressure. We can make every throw. We see every open receiver. He split the double coverage. He did a good job. But Hibble had to throw that ball away. He's getting pressure from the strong side. And if he holds it and waits till Clayton breaks open, he's going to get sacked and that ball is going to spill out. So now it's going to be third and seven just inside the 15. Go for your big targets. You got Josh Norman and Trent Smith right over there, the two big guys. And that's in the side of his head. That's where he's thinking that. They load it up on the wide side. Clayton is single to the short side. Blitz on the edge. Pivot in trouble. And taken down around the face mask. Yes, the flag comes down. Kevin Williams got the hand up, and the Sooners may be bailed out. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one right there, because Kevin Williams, the defensive tackle, shows exceptional speed for a guy who's 6'5", 290 pounds. I mean, he just closes on Hibble. I thought that he actually had him by the back of his shoulder pads. But he reaches and he gets that face mask, and you see the head snap there, a la Linda Blair. I was expecting some green stuff to come out of his mouth. Will it be a personal foul? Personal yes. foul. Face mask. After distance to the goal. First down. So the Sooners with it for the third time already today in Oklahoma State territory. Will they finally capitalize? You know, it has become so fashionable in all of football. You watch the 49ers, uh, this team, that team, to throw the three and the four-yard touchdown passes. If you can line up and bowl over people, a la the Colorado Buffalo, yes. it's a lot easier to get in the end zone. And did they ever found the football yesterday on the ground? Huge gaps. Great, 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 great run of the day. Yeah. And touchdown, Oklahoma. off a turnover for the Sooners. But big splits up front. You spread them out. Nice job by Gerard Fields coming in and cleaning up a block. And Quentin Griffin, we talked about his ability to read the leverage on the lineman. You know, that little guy just knows how to run the football. Tim Duncan in for the point after 44 of 46 on the season. And the Sooners, a little draw shot. Have a seven to nothing lead. Five and a half minutes gone by in the second quarter. So they finally come through. They've had great field position the entire half, and it was all set up after the deflection off Milosevic's hands. The interception by Matt McCoy. Scoring drive didn't take long after the interception by McCoy. And the young man from Aldean, Texas, Quentin Griffin, with the eight yard run. Massey leading the nation in returns. Back deep along with John Lewis. And a little short one. Out of bounds. Ball at the 35 for the Cowboys. Again, they are going to have good field position. We're about your college football Saturday on Fox Sportsnet. Brought to you by Kia Zero. One company. Guys, temperature right around 60 degrees. Tough day to throw the ball. And Bob's two squad, as you mentioned, James, not exactly a group that's going to pound it at you. We're going to have a re-kick. Now. Well, the option belongs to the receiving team on the flag. They can take it at the 35, but he wants Massey to touch it, obviously. I mean, that's a pretty gutsy move right there. And Jonathan Hayes, who is the special teams coach right in there, I'm late on these uh, circling stuff right here. But Jonathan Hayes is telling his the big guy right there, and he's bigger than all the players out there. He's saying, okay, if they're going to try and return this, we're going to make them eat the football. Jonathan Hayes looks like he could still catch passes for the Kansas City Chiefs, the former tight end. He looks great. Uh, he was just a good blocker. <laughs> Boy, you're tough. Wide receivers I, always, you I know. I can say that because he, you know, I'm up here, he's down there. 
I'll be on the plane by the time he watches the replay of the ball game. It's interesting. Massey is going to be in front of Lewis. Now they'll split. Tim Duncan into the win. So you got a two iron or a one iron he can use. So they've got to get better than the 35 yard line for this to pay off. Little motion. Curtis Fagan's on the move. Keeps it low on the line. And it's going to go into the end zone. It'll be covered for a touchback. So they lose 15 on the call. And that is going to be questioned. As if Curtis Antoine Savage didn't do enough running on the field. You saw him just go by. He ran 50 yards across the field, and then he runs another 70 down the field, so he gets to run 120 yards in that. But look at the guys who are out there. Josh Norman, starter. Clayton, starter. Savage, starters. They put their best players on special teams because it is as important a part of the game as offense or defense. And that's across the board now at the Big 12. We've seen that every Saturday, James. All the coaches feel that strongly about it. From the 20. Double clutch. John Lewis, seven grabs, 131 yards, career best for the young man from Port Arthur, Texas last week. And he gives him a first down, drop down from behind by Barry Holliman. Boy, look at that. That crouch low to get that snap and then get the ball out quickly because things are moving a lot faster than they were last week against Baylor when Josh Fields had to come in in relief. You know, he's standing there with the clipboard, checking out the cheerleaders, and all of a sudden the coaches say, Poe guy's down, get in. Now he's had all week to think about the fact that he's going to play. Across the 30, you make a great point, though. This is the third best defense and total yardage allowed in the entire nation. Dump off for Bell. Can he hold on? Yeah, but he loses a couple. Sophomore from DeSoto lunging after it, never was able to get his balance back. Even when you have a good play against this defense, they recover so quickly. And Tatum Bell is a guy that we talked to Les Miles a lot about a lot this week. And he's put on a little bit of weight, he's getting strong. He said he'd love to have him right up around the 200 pound range. And Bell admitted, I haven't come up with as many big plays as I thought I would. He had that great 60 yard run in the last game of the season last year against Oklahoma. And you know, I think teams saw what he could do, and they defensed him very well this season. Call it a loss of a yard. Just shy of the 30. Good pocket protection for Fields, and he shows a good that run as nice. well. That was nice. Throws a very nice pass. The completion going to John Lewis again. Back-to-back -back first down. But he had a couple of lanes to look at, didn't he? You know, playing running back, you know, is easy because you are a runner in Pop Warner and junior high and in high school, but you have to learn to pick up blitzes. And here's a great job. Tatum Bell steps out on number 99 and just takes him right off of his feet. That is a great block on Barry Holland. Holloman's not happy with it, but that's a good job by Tatum Bell, giving his quarterback time to throw the football. Tatum Bell outweighed there, James, by 95 pounds. Don't tell him, though. Bell with flags on the play, dropped by Roy Williams. I don't think we had a snap there. No, dead ball fought against the offense all the way. Ball start. You know, it's interesting. You asked Les Miles in our conversation with the head coach of the Cowboys. Get to that in one moment. Prior to the snap, ball start, gets the offense. That's a five-yard goal, and three first down. We talked about evaluation, and how do you approach this game? Because let's face it, you're not playing for a Big 12 title matchup. Right. Do you look at it that I want to see guys for down the road? And he said, no, not no. at all. No, we're, we're trying to win this game. We're going to put our best players in. He said, but, you know, it's late in the ball game. If we're way ahead of Oklahoma, I'll play some of the backups. <laughs> Nice fake on the toss sweep. Got moving it. the pocket, Rashawn Woods. And moving the football into Oklahoma territory. Fields, only an 18-year-old, a true freshman out of Stillwater High School. But he faked the toss the opposite way. Yeah, you know, I like everything that he was able to do. You're going to see the defense flow this way with the play action fake. But the great thing about the tail end of the play is the confidence that Rashawn Woods has in his hands. I mean, he's there on the sideline. Most guys want to get that ball in their chest and, and grab it. 
He just grabs that ball, puts it right in his hands. He has great feel for the passing game. Combination we can see for a long time. He's only a sophomore, Fields, only a freshman. Out of the backfield, Richard Schwartz, first carry of the day, pounding it. Decent yardage, got about four, almost five. And I like that run by Schwartz because it looked like there was daylight to the left, but there's a defender there. So what he did, he stuck it up in there and he got the positive yardage. And you know what, when they watch film on this, that will make his lineman happy because they were blocking at the point of attack. Sometimes a guy will think, oh, I can get outside or go this way, and he'll lose two or three yards. Get positive yardage. Now you have second and six, second and seven maybe, and you have a manageable situation. Richard Torres, the definition of a legacy. His father and all five uncles went to Oklahoma State. Young man from UConn. I think he's pumped up to be involved in this game. Bell's back there, but doesn't make any difference. Teddy Lehman drops him immediately. Maybe a loss of a yard. Now, you know what that play is? Remember when you were a little kid and, and you wanted to go over and play with Johnny? Johnny's your best friend. You knew he was out of town, but you kept banging on the door. You've got to continue to try and run in the middle because somebody's going to open the door once and you're going to get to split through it. Now, Johnny's gone on vacation for a while and Teddy Lehman and Rocky Kalmus are there. They so don't want to open that door too often. Third long. Third <laughs> a little more than six, almost seven. Final six and a half minutes of the first 30. Fields with good pocket protection, and he's got a first down. He went to his tight end, who took a header. Unfortunately, Milosevic, hopefully he's okay. I think he got hit right on the knee. He went right for that right knee, James. Yeah. Brandon Everett, the free safety, went low to dump him. Milosevic did a nice job on the play, kind of blocked his way up. Comes right in, but right on the right knee. Yeah, you, you can't speculate on what the injury is, but that that doesn't look good. And Milosevic is such a great looking athlete, you know, playing as a redshirt freshman out of Louisville, Texas. To get in the end zone on these drives because a field goal, you'd have to get inside the 15-yard line to feel confident kicking a field goal with this gusting win. Tim Burrow, the only one in the backfield, the fullback. Fields. He's got it. wide open. Out of bounds, just shy of the goal line. Rashawn Woods, what a first half he has had. Woods grabbing that one is his fourth catch of the day. Boy, you're talking about a defensive back fighting on a move. Derek Strait, number two. Rashawn Woods comes off, you get the slant, you get the pump fake, and you get a defensive back who has taken a full course meal. Nice, right in the hands again. Right in the hands, and that's about the one, two-inch line there. And now dead ball foul coming up. Movement on the line. And you move it back to the five-yard line, and this becomes a tough five yards to get against this defense. Prior to the snap, full starts, 62 offense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. We talked about the double moves earlier of Rashawn Woods, and Fields selling it well, too. Yeah, he, he had it early when they were coming off the goal line, but Fields with the pump fake, and Derek Strait, if you're going to go for the ball, you have to go through the receiver and knock him off his route at the same time. So after the mark off of five, puts it outside of the five. First and goal coming up for Oklahoma State. A timeout on the field. There's a shock for you. Oklahoma, the recipient of three interceptions. They scored off the third interception when they started the drive at the 17 of Oklahoma State. But it's been the Cowboys that have consistently moved the football against this tough Sooner defensive unit. Well, tomorrow, another full day of NFL activity. Undisputed champions, a free game show, starts it all off. Fox NFL Sunday, Jeff Garcia, the 49ers, taking on Peyton Manning and the Colts. Ricky Williams, the Saints, matching up the Patriots. Coverage begins at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Run it, but they ran it with Montana, with Steve Young, and now with Jeff Garcia, a player who a lot of people are saying is good enough to be the league's most valuable player this year. Well, earlier this week, James, they named the academic All Big 12 squad. The young man to be honored by for Oklahoma State, Eaton, Glapian, Gray, Milosevic, Vanderhoof, and Wolgamuth. Now, I know those guys are smart. Kyle Eaton has a 4.0. For the Not Sooners. to be outdone, the Sooners. 
They've got eight on the board. Dotley, oh. Hibble, McCoy, Patter, Romero, Shelby, Sims, and Ronaldo works. And it's always good when your quarterback's an all-academic guy. And, you know, you can have a kicker and a punter, but those guys don't have to call audibles. Now first and goal, deepest penetration of the day for Oklahoma State. Burrow and Bell in the backfield. Tatum Bell nudges it to the four. You know, the tough thing here is that when you get down, you, know, you have the red the red zone, which is inside the 20. You need another color when you get to the five-yard line. The key player down here is your tight end. With Milosevic out, here you've had a guy who's taken most of the snaps on the play action. You tried to get him the ball. The next group of guys, they don't know it as well. You've also got a backup quarterback in, in Josh Fields. But he does have that mobility. I would have liked to have seen that on first down. Oklahoma State trying to tie up the fourth-ranked Sooners. Fields, great protection off the fingertips you know, of Rashawn Woods. And Rashawn Woods got away with a big league push-off. He came off the ball, slammed into Derek Strait, and knocked Derek Strait back about four yards. And there's no flag, so there's no penalty. But at the bottom of your screen, you're going to see a collision. Boom. And look who's in the picture and look who's out of the picture. Woods is 10th best in the nation, averaging a little more than seven catches a game coming in. The leader in the Big 12 in receiving yardage, and they are going to take a timeout. And we've got about 12 guys in the huddle, so they could have gotten flagged for that. So now third and goal coming up after the timeout for Les Miles and his squad. But he's got to be pleased with Josh Fields in particular. Seven of 13 after the last miss. 91 yards in completions. Yeah, you know, you can be pleased with all those numbers, but you need the payoff here. You had the ball on the four-inch line. Now you're back inside your five. You're looking at a third down, trying to get in. And you know what? If you go to kick a field goal, this team is going to come after you. They love to try and block kicks. The, the snap. They've held their opponents 50% of the time out of the end zone. Now. You're looking for a big play. Roy Williams has done it consistently all year long. Tight formation for Oklahoma State. Only one wide receiver. Looking back the other way. And the tight end taking it in. Buried as soon as he got it. Rocky Kalmus all over. The minute that the quarterback went away from the run move, everybody in the secondary said, okay, who do we have? And this is such a smart defense. You can talk about guys being good players, being fast, good 40 times and all that. But that is a heady play by Kalmus to know who he has in coverage. And you were talking about the backups. That's the backup tight end, Billy Batchema. Now, the field goal try for Luke Phillips. 12 of 14 in the season. It's up, and it's good. Points on the board for the Cowboys, who controlled the football and the clock in the half, but empty-handed so far. I went in into No problems. Place kicker Luke Phillips. Almost an 80-yard drive. They get 71. 26-yard field goal by Phillips. First points of the day on the Nissan scoring drive for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. And if you are the underdog in a ball game, you would love to shorten the game. Nine minutes, 14 seconds. The Cowboys came into the ball game averaging under 28 minutes of possession time. So great drive for Oklahoma. Still, obviously, everybody knows they would have loved the seven points out of that. Not even three yards of snap, though, in the half for the Sooners. 23 snaps, 60 yards. And Hibble's so hot coming in. Out of the gun. Finds his receiver. Taking it in, Mark Clayton, the redshirt freshman. As Mark Mangino said, would not be denied, forced his way into the lineup, but back to Hibble. Hibble hit 70% since taking up the starting job. Jason White went down with the season-ending knee injury. 70% for almost 900 yards over the last three with eight touchdowns and only three picks. Very quiet so far today for Mangino, though. He's got nine completions for 69 yards. Second and five at the 25. Griffin 
He's got the first down. So playing it safe, going for the short stuff. Chris Massey bolting him out of bounds. But you know what? That's their offense. This is not a stretch the field, go vertical, you know, like Florida State and Miami and those teams. They're going to dink and dunk it around, and they want the run after the catch. Now, one of the hard things about getting the run after the catch on a windy day is your receivers have to secure the ball first, and they're catching it into their belly and their stomach sometimes. So they're not, boom, catching it and going. Only a three-man rush for Oklahoma State. Going down, did it come up with it? Antoine Savage. That's a good catch right there. That's on, a great catch. On a ball that looked like it had a lead tip. And that ball just not nosedived when it left Hibble's hand. Savage got under it. Hey, look at this ball going, mm -hmm. I mean, straight to the ground. And a nice sliding. You know, when I was young, I used to be able to do that. As I got older, I just let it hit me in the ankle. <laughs> First catch of the day for the junior from Albany, Georgia. Close to 10, so it's going to necessitate a measurement. You know, we talked about the run after the catch, and it's just a little short. It's about a bagel short. If he gets that ball up and hits him right around the belt line, Savage turns up, and he, he may run another 15 or 20 yards with that. And that's really what this offense is designed for. Savage led him in catches last year. This year, 31 coming in, and James, they've really spread it around. 56 coming in for the tight end, Trent Smith. Quentin Griffin with 49. Clayton's got 41. Norman with 41 after the 11 last week. Savage 31. Curtis Megan 30. So they do spread it around. They get a lot of people involved. 16 different Sooners have scored as well. A pop, but boy, like a bowling ball, rolls off the pins. Heads over to the right side of the lane. And he picks that spare and gets a first down. Well, they, they had a sign up during one of the commercials. You can't stop the twister. And really, Quentin Griffin doesn't stop his legs moving just because he feels contact. Nice job twisting out of that, picking up a first down for him. Back to back first downs for one of the few times today for the Oklahoma Sooners. Plenty of time for Hibble. First deep ball, and he's got it inside the 30 yard line. It's complete to Mark Clayton, the redshirt freshman. Jump ball with Paul Jones, and he had him angled out. And you throw short, you throw short, you throw short, and this is the deep ball into the wind, so you get a little extra on it. Mark Clayton does a nice job in going up and catching it at the highest point. You, you hear coaches talk about that all the time. Too often, guys will let that ball come down to his chest. If he lets that ball come down, Paul Jones will get his hand in there and knock it away. Strong arms. What did he hold it out, as you say? Clayton, a former track standout in high school from Arlington, Texas. Inside the 28, first down Sooners. And again all day, Savage pays, but gets a few yards. Not much, though. Boy, he had Curtis Fagan going to the post and just pulled it down and didn't, didn't want to risk throwing an interception. The Nissan Halftime Report and a first half that's been a shock so far. Oklahoma State has been able to control the football. They haven't been able to get in the end zone, though. I'll tell you my two biggest plays of the year after the game. After the play. Right? I hope you tell us during the game. <laughs> <laughs> the big tight end, Trent Smith, diving for the first down, coming close. He looks like he'll be shy by about a half a yard, going over Terrence Robinson, the strong side backer. <laughs> You know, he's wide open coming underneath. This is zone coverage. Everyone drops back and sees not very deep. And that time he had the passing lane to throw the ball to. You know, he's not, not a big tight end. 6'5", but not a lot of pounds. You're right, not two and a quarter, 230. So now third less than a yard. Griffin, gap closes in a hurry. Standing him up, Chris Massey did an exceptional job with the flag down at the end of the play. Massey took him on until he could get some help. And they, they bent him back. Trent Smith didn't like it. He's going up, getting in the face of the defenders. I didn't see a, a face mask. Let's see if they did go with a face mask call. 
you know, and a guy that's short, you're going to attack them around the head. See if he came up with the cage early. Mask, five yards. Yeah. Just kind of grabbing or swatting at it. And like I said, I mean, he's not a tall guy, so he's down in that range, and he has the hand up there. Pulls on it a little bit, but he, he lets it go. He doesn't, doesn't do the Linda Blair on him. And it was a personal foul face mask penalty that kept the drive alive on their only touchdown after the turnover. And, and that one is going to give them, looks like a fresh set of downs. So you get first down, 13 yard line. And once again, you know, maybe because I was a tall receiver and I always won the ball in the red zone, I look for the big guys. I look for Norman and Smith down here. Produces the sixth first down of the game for the Sooners. Hibble with ample time into the end zone and popped away. From the tight end, Trent Smith, exceptional job by Marcus Jones, who's still down. He did not leave the tight end. And this is a secondary. You know, we talked about Oklahoma not being deep defensively, but this is a secondary that has had injuries and suspensions, so they don't have extra guys to come off the back, off the sideline. And it looks like Trent Smith gets his hands up in the face and then comes down with the elbow right on his go. You got second down. You keep him out the end zone here. You at least go on to halftime. At worst, down 10-3. But 14-3 makes it a, a tough, tough road to climb. You know, different circumstance, but that's what I like so much about Colorado yesterday. At the end of the third quarter, every player on that team put up four fingers. Oh, yeah. Like, we got a lot of work left. Now, that was four touchdowns going for the running <laughs> four more. time. Yeah. Four more. Wow. Now, second and 10. Outside of the 13. Option short side. Griffin, nice lane. Takes a shot, though. A shoulder from Massey, and it looks like Massey may have taken the brunt of that blow. Yeah, it doesn't look like, and I know Griffin is only 5'7", but it doesn't look like he's lowering his shoulder. I mean, he just kind of stays square, and guys run into him. He bounces, but they get hurt. Great job at the end of the play, switching the ball from his right arm to his left arm. You see so many college running backs who would keep that ball in their dominant arm, and then they're really trying to get away from the play, but Griffin moving it to his left. Great job there. Third and a little less than three. Tony's in the backfield with Griffin. Pocket protection, and wide. It looked like he was available, Mark Clayton. A little bit too far in front, working against Darren Williams. Yeah, but that's a nice win for the Cowboy defense. Yeah. Big time. After a drive that started all the way back at the Oklahoma 20-yard line. You had the penalty. You had a guy get hurt on your team. And, you know, it's time to call everybody up. Hey, we need a stop here. Guys came through. 23-yard field goal attempt for Tim Duncan. He's a 10 straight, 18 of 26 on the season. Trying to put the Sooners up by seven. And does exactly that. So a short one and a seven-point lead for Oklahoma. Grab your leathers because it's... The eight-yard run by Quentin Griffin after an interception by Matt McCoy. Massey back deep. It goes the other way, though. I think they might take it at the 35-yard line this time. I, I think they'd be wise to do that. They passed. If you join us a little bit late, they passed and deferred and let them mark off five. And it burned Les Miles and his staff because then it went right through the end zone. Well, you got one timeout. You take the ball at the 35-yard line. You need about a 25-yard reception, a 15-yard reception, and then you can take some cracks at the end zone. And you should have 20 seconds to go on the clock at least. Kick out of bounds. Oklahoma State, the ball will be put in play 30 yards in front of the free kick line. First down. Yeah, everybody's going, free kick line? What, what? I never heard it referred to as that. So the Cowboys will have it back and moved it very successfully. 71-yard drive the last time they had it under the direction as we look at the Nissan Oklahoma scoring drive. I don't think any of the cornerbacks will bite on that short pump fake this time. Big run, Tatum Bell, and a nice seal. Barely tripped up with a midfield strike. 
If they don't get him, and Matt McCoy made the play, the sophomore from Jenks, Oklahoma. Big yardage, another 20 coming over to the near side boundary. And at that point, Tatum Bell was just about to kick it into high. He had it in second, went to third, and if he had got it into fourth gear, it's goodbye, fellas. Good point. Guy that ran at 10.2600 meters two years ago in high school in DeSoto, Texas. Fields working the side. Get out of bounds. And Milosevic gets the clock stopped with the first down to the 38. But see, now it's stopped until they start it for play. And in college football, that official will start it, and then he'll take his time before he moves away. So they'll lose a couple of ticks. They'd be lucky to get the snap off before 27 seconds. Now well, you've got a true freshman at quarterback clock moving now. Inside of 27. And held up, trying to get down Phil John Lewis. He got tangled up, though, with the defensive back, Derek Strait. Yeah, they tried to pump and go, but you had the cornerbacks up in a short zone, and then you had help behind them. So you could pump and go, but there was nowhere to go. It's interesting. After the game last week and a win at Baylor, 38-22, talking about Josh Fields, Les Miles said it appeared that the freshman was completely unflappable. Boy, what a compliment. Or he was too young not to know the duress he was under. <laughs> well, at least he didn't have the, at least he didn't have the deer in the headline look. Now trying to set it up for a field goal attempt down win. Richard Schwarz on the carry. A 200 pound sophomore. Clock running. They stop it at 11 seconds. It'll be a timeout for Oklahoma State. They're looking right now at about a 52, 53 yard field goal. As we mentioned, they are dead down win, and until about a 20 mile an hour win. It's been gusting okay, since now, early this morning. It is third down. Now, you don't want to pull the bonehead player of the year where you pick up five yards and you rush up there and you spike the ball on fourth down. You can't do that. They have no timeouts. It's either a sideline out of bounds play or nothing. You line up here, you go ahead and kick this ball here. Well, if they get the first down, then he can spike it. Yes. So but he's gotten get, the one pass if he gets the first down. But we just saw 31 seconds on the clock to play before, and it took him all the way to 24. Granted, they're running a real play. I hope a spike would take seven. Well, but, but you're going to run five or six seconds off to get a play done. Nissan halftime report coming up next. We'll check in downstairs with Eric Clements. Chris Sims and Teddy Lehman running the ball. In. And is this the kicker on the field? Am I head yes. coaching material or what? They're is going the, for is the Kansas job still open and who do I need to call? It is third down though. And here goes Luke Phillips. Long of 48 this year. He's got the wind. It's got to come inside the upright and it nicks the upright. It's good. It looked like it just shaved the upright. I'd love to live in Lawrence as a head coach though, because <laughs> I know how to make the calls. A 52-yarder. And it was Elder. He gets all of this. Remember, I talked to Elder put it down for the Phillips. game. He said you get an extra 10 yards with that. I like the way Elder got it down though on a high snap. Don't you love it when those kickers are pumped up? Yeah, it's also a ball game. But you see, nobody else hugged them because it's just a halftime kick. Game winning kick, everybody runs out there and you're mobbing. Five seconds left in the half. On the offense, from the right foot of the sophomore from Tulsa, Luke Phillips. He's got a 26 and 52 yarder, a new career best. What kind of kick do you do here, Joel? I'll, I'll let you be my special teams guy. I'll pop it into the air. No, you, you don't pop it into the air because they can get a free kick or they have a free play. You drive this ball deep through the end zone with the wind, you make them kneel down on it at the 20. I'm assuming that my man You're not going to coach my under special it, teams Get down there long. under it, make the catch, and we get another field goal try. Okay, see where this ball is going? Trouble Out 20. Sooners will have it first and 10. <laughs> I'll let you be the assistant special teams coach. If I'm not a coordinator, I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> Oklahoma State is going into the locker room feeling real good about themselves right now. 181 yards offensively compared to 129 for the Sooners. And they have been able to move the ball. 
They've turned it over a couple of times. That has burned them big time. Room. They've been great defensively in the second half. In fact, over the last two games, to give you an idea, Texas A&M and Texas Tech, they've had only five first downs in the last two games in the second halves against the Sooner defense. But Les Miles feeling pretty strong, down by only four. They who have really turned it up a notch defensively, and if not for a turnover deep in their territory, we have not seen a sustained sooner drive throughout the course of the ball game. And in the breakdown of the numbers, what's really surprising, almost 18 minutes the time of possession, so the Cowboys have been able to hold on to the football. They've also been able to run the football far more successfully than the Sooners. And, and success is, you have to measure that a little bit because the Sooners came in giving up 2.7 yards per carry. Well, Tatum Bell in this ballgame, 3.2 yards per carry. Now, you don't think a half a yard is a lot? Go down there and try and get a half a yard against the Sooner defense. It really is a shock the way things have developed so far. Halftime numbers no ground game at all for the Oklahoma Sooners. No, it really hasn't been. And four yards rushing, they need to control the line of scrimmage, but really the ball club that is doing that has been the Oklahoma State Cowboys so far. So now what does it take? Nate Hibble in this setup that we've seen out of the gun, they don't pound you with the football. They really do dink it and dump it, but they have not been able to do that successfully. Well, it takes what it has taken all year long for Oklahoma, and that's defense to set up the offense. They cannot, they cannot let Oklahoma State go up and down the field and have another 18 minutes of possession or it could be the Texas Longhorns playing next week in Without Texas Stadium. And it may require as you mentioned it may require a score from the Sooners defensive unit to get it done today but they have scored in seven of the last 14. Fourth rank Oklahoma in a battle. Dissipated especially the Sooners and the Cowboys they got the opening kickoff of the game because the Sooners, after the Cowboys deferred to the second half, the Sooners, they wanted to play the win game more than they wanted the football. So Oklahoma State will have it to start the second half. Now, could Massey, who leads the nation in kickoffs, get his hands on it. Doubtful. Downwind again for Duncan. Let's check in with Eric Clemens. Eric. All right, Joel. I talked to Les Miles of Oklahoma State, his team down by four as we entered the third quarter. Asked him what he told his ball club. He says, hey, here we go again. We have our chances. We simply need to execute and continue to play hard, and something special could happen here tonight, guys. All right, Eric. When did Eric have time for all that? I mean, he's hosting the halftime report. He's over there singing with the cheerleaders, and he had time to talk to the head coach. Hey, do me a favor, will you? Don't blow his cover again. <laughs> First and ten from the 20. Four-point ball game to start the second half. Fields in the eye. Tatum Bell ripped down. Well, earlier today, this is the way Eric Clemens, Roy Williams, made the stop. This is the way he prepares for a game. Come on. Once you can truly be, sing that song, y'all. You're a star. Come on. No matter who you are. Yes. You know, we don't need star search. We've got him already. What a voice. Boy, Eric. That was great. The big time is <laughs> looming for Eric Clemens. He, hey, he just passed the audition as far as I'm concerned. Second and ten. Bell breaking tackles, gets the first down across the 30 to the 31, and Everidge comes up, and he took a shot in the arm. So he got away from Jimmy Wilkerson. Everidge gets up slowly. You don't see it this early from an Oklahoma Sooner team. They're pressing a little bit, and by that I mean, here you are, you have second and nine, and you're up in the gap, blitzing, double gap on the weak side. If you miss, you give up the big play. And this is a ball club that really doesn't, they should be able to line up in their base defense and beat these guys. But they're trying to make something happen because their offense has been ineffective. Has been in out. Bell can't make a mess. Shut down by Teddy Lehman. Well, last year, the Sooners Cowboys matchup. Oklahoma State shut out until the third quarter. Freshman Tatum Bell taking the pitch around the left side. 60 yards for a score. Cowboys. Only score of the game in a 12-7 setback. Could it be another long run for Bell before the day is over? He's got 41 on 13 carries last week, 22 carries, 88 yards and a score. And he needs just enough rushing yardage to, number one, keep them on the field, 
and chew up some clock time. But they, I mean, they're down 10 to 6, so they need points. Looking at second and 10, empty backfield. Williams on the blitz. Fields, nice move out of the backfield. Up to the 35, and boy, they did get Roy Williams on the edge. Matt McCoy making the stop. Now, we talked about Kyle Eaton earlier, Verizon All-American 4.0. When you're that smart, you know who to block. Roy Williams is coming on an outside blitz. Kyle Eaton picks up the Heisman Trophy candidate. Does a nice job in blocking. So, give one guy the Heisman Trophy, one guy academic All-American, and got a stalemate. Flag down. Dead ball foul coming up. Thrown real early by the Lions. It was. Illegal substitution, maybe? Sideline warning. Oh. Oklahoma State bench. There's no yardage involved. That's their first one. Now, see, that's tough. This is a nice, compact, cozy stadium. Yes. There's not a lot of room around the boundary. Hardly any, James. You've got the biggest ball game of the year that Oklahoma State is going to play in. And these kids, these kids want to see the game. You have to be back off this white line. And, and that's not a lot of room. The coaches are trying to watch, and you're trying to get a bird's eye view. Boy, right, talk about a ticky-tack call. Now, third and long. Tons of time for Fields. Oh, and his man went down. Do we get a there. flag? He was trying to get it over the middle to Terrence Davis Bryant. First time he's gone in his and, direction. And you're getting a personal foul on the Oklahoma State sideline. The assistant coaches were out giving the official an ear pull, and rightfully so because the defensive back came through, came through the wide receiver, and you cannot do that. Now they're going to punt it to the wind even further back. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Oklahoma State bench. That's a 15-yard penalty. Both down. Now you lose the battle of field position. But let's take a look at what got this unit so heated. The slot receiver is going to go up and come across. And when he comes across, Fields doesn't hit him. He's not open. He's not open. He's not open. But right there, now the defensive back knocks him down on his way to the football. That was Incredible Roy Williams. -call. Roy Williams is safe to you. Got him. Elder punting to Fagan, who stays away. Man, Oklahoma is going to be in great shape for the first possession of the second half. The Sooners are going to have it. Close to their own 47. We'll take a timeout. Bad break for the Cowboys at the outset of the third. Sooners. It's college football Saturday on Fox Sports Net, presented by Kia Sara, continues in great shape for the first series of the second half. They've got it at the 47. Pibble didn't do much in the first half. Only went downfield a couple of times. We got dirty, we got Griffin and Tony start in the backfield. Two back look will help them pick up blitzing linebackers a little better. Will they bring more than four? Straight four-man rush, tons of time for him. Oh, Smith, pop, big time hit. Levels, their leading tackler, the senior from Richardson, Texas. And that would have only been a gain of three or four at the most. Yeah, plenty of trying to throw the football. And you see where he's been able to distribute the football to, hit his wide receivers, the tight ends, and the running backs that should actually just say Quentin Griffin over there. Move the ball around pretty well, but on that last play, he had time to throw, but there was no one open down the field. Nice change-up coverage by Oklahoma State. Second and ten. Pibble checking off at the line. Moving tight to run an out route. Looking to Josh Norman. Is he going to go to number three? It's taking a lot of time. And Smith, two plays in a row. Smith has paid the price. This time Massey before it was Dwayne Levels with it even a bigger stick. Now I watched Trent Smith at the line of scrimmage. He was still adjusting his face mask when the play started. And this is the reason why on the previous play, Dwayne Levels right in the kisser. And if that wasn't bad enough, here's Craig Massey upending it. And this is all about your quarterback putting you in vulnerable situations. Hibble has missed his last four. Third and ten. Well, they waste the superb field position. 
Short side is loaded. Blitz from the opposite side. Time for Hibble. First down. Mark Clayton. Down to the 35. Had enough time. That was the key. Paul Jones bringing him down. Chris Massey's trying to read the quarterback's eyes. He's viewing, viewing, viewing. Breaks on the play. Just a little late to get to the tackle. They ran a double crossing route. Massey had to make sure that the deep receiver didn't get behind him. Then he tries to come up and make the tackle on Clayton. Biggest conversion of the game for Oklahoma. You can hear him screaming draw in the background. Oklahoma State read it perfectly. Kevin Williams wrapping up the running back. Only a yard, yard and a half. NFL this morning on Fox. When they hear the name of Deacon Jones who played in the zero. Well, they hear rings <laughs> from their helmet. <laughs> Griffin can uh, hang on off his pads. You know what? You look at that ball, and that ball should have been caught. But when you're in this short passing game, accuracy is so important. That ball is thrown behind him on the back shoulder. You lead him, and he has room to run up the field. Quentin Griffin is slowly gaining ground as he's coming out the backfield. And that pass has to be accurate. And the wind has died down a little bit in the stadium. So it's not as windy as it was. but. You've got to put the ball on the money. Hibble now just one for his last six. And you can see it's affected them on third downs. They're only two out of eight today. Last four games, they've been better than 40% of their third down tries. Blitz is coming. In trouble. Hibble goes down. Hibble held that ball. Kevin Williams again. A little too long. They're doing a great job. Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator, a nice job because you rush five, but they don't know which five are coming. And you've got these change of pace players in Massey and Marcus Jones and Terrence Robinson who can drop in coverage or blitz. And so the offensive line is having a hard time figuring out who they're accounting for on the defensive unit. Jeff Ferguson with the win. Terrence Davis Bryant at the 10 yard line for the Cowboys. High short one. Cowboys, they hang on. And the halo area was impeded. There's flags coming down. It'll be Cowboys football. They did not give him for the two yards needed. You can see that at the outset. Cowboys have maintained possession. Saw that yesterday in the Nebraska Colorado matchup. So the Cowboys will maintain possession. They'll have it first and 10 outside of their own 20. Put it at the 21 yard line. Five minutes gone by. Cowboys getting stronger as the game goes on. And they're only down by four. College football. The old field house is the energy center or in Norman, Oklahoma. Joel Myers, James Lofton, Eric Clemens. And Oklahoma State putting a severe scare in the Sooners fans. Fields with time, threads it. Can't hang on though. He's trying to get it to John Lewis. Never had possession. But to get it through that traffic to begin with. See, I thought he caught that ball and then was tackled. Now, I was wrong once back in 1968 to try to fair catch at the park. I'm shocked that you admitted that. <laughs> <laughs> he did a nice job in waiting because what Brandon Everett did, he came from the weak side and dropped down into a weak zone rotation. And, you know, this guy does not look like he's playing the second ball game. Not at all. Very, he's in the pocket. unflappable. Not moving. He doesn't have happy feet, does he? Hanging into the pocket nicely. Into the dump off. Tatum Bell breaking tackles out to the 29. Short of the first down by about three. Finally, Everidge caught up with him. Got away though and broke the tackle of Derek Strait. And Derek Strait is a guy who played free safety in high school and really talks about how well he tackles. That time, great running through the tackle by Tatum Bell. And they've been close a couple of times this year. You know, look at the ball game to Southern Miss, the heartbreaker, the triple overtime loss in conference. They're trying for their first conference win under Les Miles. And then they went the distance with Colorado. And Colorado add, winning that ball game late. Add on to those three in the third week. They lost at AM and up 21 to 7. And most of the second half, it was 14 7. Four really close games. Could have gone either way. 
third and three. Not close. Woods was the target in the general direction. Yeah, but you know what? I like him getting rid of that football. He was looking to his right. It wasn't there. He knew that he had a deep receiver going deep on the left. And all I have to do is turn and throw it in that direction, get the ball out of bounds, and I avoid a sack because, once again, field position is so important in this ball game. in a game where we've only seen a couple of sustained drives, and those drives have been by the Cowboys. And especially in this quarter with another punt yep. into the win for Oklahoma State, Scott Elder, Curtis Fagan. And now, is that a jump by Oklahoma where they draw it off? It's a first down. If it's against the Sooners. It looked like Brandon Shelby, number five, came across the line. <laughs> I think you heard that, oh, no, and that was from a Sooner. And you really don't see those kind of mistakes from Oklahoma. Encroachment yes. on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. First down. Yep, he's, he's getting an earful from Bob Stoops. So you got to watch the football, son. If you want to play on special teams with me, you watch the football. Just gets his momentum going. Well, and you know, that's a long walk back. And the head coach is standing about 15 yards out on the field talking to you. And you know, you don't walk away until he's done with you. It is only a four-point ball game. Six minutes gone in the third quarter. And this is like committing an error in an inning and giving a baseball team four outs. Don't forget Oklahoma State's going to have the win in the fourth quarter. Lewis on the double clutcher. Defending and jumping well was Derek Strait right in front of John Lewis. That may have precipitated the double clutcher. Now, we've been talking about Gary Barnett in Colorado. They're in the Big 12 title game. Right. What about Mack Brown in Texas? Do you think... As a group, they're probably watching. Well, Matt <laughs> Brown came out and said, you know, if we win our ball game, then we'll be co-Big 12 champions of the South. And he was just assuming. He was assuming that Oklahoma would take care of their business. And Bob Stoops said, well, he can call it whatever he wants, but we're going to the Big 12 championship game if we win. Scores in the backfield. They'll keep it on the ground. Across the 35 to the 36. Wilkerson wrapping up the running back. And if you're sitting at home going, okay, we we got second and ten. Why are we running up the middle? Told you, you knock on the door to see if little Johnny can come out and play. And every once in a while, his mom's going to let him out. He won't have to do homework right after school. And you also set up the bootleg, the rollout, all your play actions by banging that ball in the middle. And look at Les Miles looking up at the clock. You're telling him to hurry up. Well, and also... Let's wait for the win, too, before we take chances. We're, gonna, we're going to have the win in the fourth quarter. Burrow, the single to the backfield. Here's Roy Williams. Burrow got him. But Fields has problems on the other side, and it's wow. incomplete. And there is a penalty flag down very late. Coming from the line judge, he's coming all the way across as the play was rolled out and away from him. He's calling a holding. And normally, you got to be within maybe 20 yards of the hole to call it. And that official was about 40 yards away from the play. He had a good Haley view. Against the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Now, can Oklahoma stay on side? And will we see number five out there, Brandon Shelby? Brandon Shelby's out there. They hold him down there. Sooners came close once. And that was when Elder was punting out of the end zone. Fagan, secret cube, good field position. Good I mean, punch. He's got a good one, and it turned really over. Really a good punt. Fagan, no blocking. Two Cowboys all over him. Young, the first one down there. Also helping out. Faith Carter. Fantastic job by Willie Young to stay out of that halo. Don't violate that five-yard rule. Why give him the extra yardage? Be smart. Since taking it over in his third season as the head coach of the Sooners, clinging to a four-point lead. And now deep in his own territory after Elder put together the beautiful punt. Griffin finds a nice lane across the 20 to the 21. Four yards for Quentin Griffin before he's met by Terrence Robinson. Well, the new show that everybody's been talking about. Check it out. You'll enjoy it. The best damn sports show, period.
It comes your way weeknights at 7.30 and 11.30 on Fox Sports Net. They're dunking. They're doing everything. Did you know who the unsung star of that show is? Chris Rhodes, the host. And he does a nice job in, in, in getting through all the rest of that muckety-muck stuff and keeping the show on schedule. I'm surprised you didn't give the producer a mention. Looking for a new guest slot. <laughs> <laughs> Second and six from the 21. Dibble had great protection. God damn it! Dynamite coverage downfield. It's now a PG-rated show. And Richmond landed on top of Hibble. And Hibble's taken some shots throughout the course of the afternoon. But you know what? That's a nice job by Richmond because his job is outside contained, and he does a good job in getting rid of Quentin Griffin and then putting the blow on Hibble. Landed on that left shoulder, didn't he? That was aching him early in the season, remember that? Ooh, making the right. Yeah. Wow. Hibble's only one for his last seven. Sooner's in trouble. Third and deep in their own territory. Now, and this is where I talked to Mangino. Who's your go-to guy? He said, we just spread the ball around. Read the offense. You need a go-to guy. It's been very quiet. Popped into the air. And coming down with it, believe it or not, Josh Norman. What a play. You know you're living right. But catch the football at the highest point. The defensive back on the play had his arm below him. Marcus Jones waiting for the ball to fall, kind of making the basket catch a la Willie Mays. And when this ball starts to come back down, Norman, the bigger guy, just goes up over the top. See him take it off of his shoulder? Now, if you catch that ball above your head, you've got a chance. Huge play for the Sooners. Norman 6-2. Marcus Jones 5-9. Took advantage of it and got up there. Shovel. Griffin breaks the tackle. Huge play for the Sooners. And a flag down. Maybe an illegal block for the wide receiver down. Yeah, That's Antoine, Antoine Savage. Savage. Exactly. But you know what? An illegal block is better than no block at all. Because that's what receivers always get accused of. Standing around and just looking cute toward their goal line. Nobody wants to move. Nobody wants to play call against them. Illegal block in the back against the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty and first from the spot of the foul. Repeat the down, will be first down over. It'll be first down in about 12 yards because it happened during the play, so from the spot of the foul, you don't get a fresh set of downs. So it's back to the 36, would have been close to the midfield strike. On the run by Griffin. He stays in the backfield with him. It's interesting, top side, they bunched their three on the short side of the field. Blitz, backside, popped into the air again on the shovel pitch. Incomplete pass. Boy, the, it, the great thing about it, you put pressure on all five guys. Dwayne Levels lines up over Vince Carter, and everybody comes, and they're coming hard. It looked like Kevin Williams, who had the penetration, may have gotten his hand on the football. Kevin Williams is playing a heck of a ball game. He's lined up over Howard Duncan, who's really their most accomplished lineman. Romeo's the all-star, but Duncan has played everywhere along that line, and Williams has given him fits today. Duncan at left guard today, former Juco All-American. On second and long, Good tap. Savage ripped down very quickly by Darren Williams. The young man who had two picks and returned both for scores and only his third career start last week of the win over Baylor. And they were outgained in the Baylor game. Their defense came up oh, yeah. and made the big plays when they had to because Baylor had 500 yards compared to three and a quarter for Oklahoma State. But if you're getting those interceptions and running them all the way back, that means your offense isn't getting back on the field. But Baylor did a nice job in moving the ball last week, and I would believe that Oklahoma, when they watched those films, they said, well, Baylor went up and down the field on them. It'll be easy for us to do. If you look at today's ball game, and it really has been about the Cowboy Twins. Good, tough defense. Huge third down. Pocket protection holds up for Hibble, but Trent Smith blanketed. And that's a good down. Ball. Marcus Jones, a strong safety. Well, especially after what happened over the middle yeah. against Oklahoma State. And he's got to have his head on the swivel now. You can tell how tough a kid he is. He's there in between two defenders, and he wants to come up with his football, and then he's frustrated because he didn't get the call. But it's been that type of day. He's right there between Levels and Jones, and that's not early. 
He really that's not early. He got that arm underneath him. Yeah, that's a good play. So now the punt from Ferguson. Terrence Davis Bryant, but it is downwind again. With 5.22 to play in the quarter for Oklahoma. Pressure. No, he's blocked into him. That's not a good call. Well, flag went down. It'll die outside of the 20. Brian Hodges was blocking the Cowboy. And he's saying exactly that. I was blocked into him. And they're having a discussion about this now. You'll see it from this side of your screen. He's going to come. He's going to be engaged. And he's still engaged with the offensive player. Pick that up. Close to foul. Roughing the kicker. Unbelievable. That's a wild call. It's called on Carter. Reserve safety. He's done a good job on specials today. That was not a good call, and I don't care how you explain it to Les Miles. He's shaking his head. He doesn't want to hear it. A game of this that, magnitude. That, that's a terrible call, Joe. And a James, a game of this magnitude. Big 12 South Division title on the line. So now, a break for Oklahoma. After they jumped offside on an Oklahoma State punt, Oklahoma State went three and out again. Quentin Griffin takes a shot at the 40-yard line after a game of three. Kevin Williams plug in it again. Now can Oklahoma take advantage of the opportunity? Oklahoma State did not capitalize, you might remember, when they had it. After three and out, they're ready to punt. Shelby jumped offside. And, and you know Oklahoma State has to feel like the middle child. You know, your oldest child gets all the special toys, and the middle child gets the hand-me-downs. And then at last one, you decide we're not going to have any more kids. You treat that one special. And Oklahoma State, they, they've gotten some questionable calls in this ball game. Hibble in trouble. Good night. Getting to Hibble. Making the play. Clay go. He moved into the starting lineup midway through the season. They've gotten the special teams breaks. The offsides penalty. Neither team has been able to cash in big, although the Sooners are still in the middle of their drive. But that sack by Clay Coe, and you bring in some fresh legs. He's in that defensive tackle rotation playing behind Kevin Williams and Waylon Brown. He comes in fresh, and he runs right by the offensive blockers. Disbelief right now by the Oklahoma Sooner fans as the officials led by referee Mike Weir. This constitutes a long drive, though, for Oklahoma today. It's been tough for them to pick up back-to-back -back first down. Now for the sack, third and 17. You go with the pressure or the coverage. They bring three. And Hibble going deep and wide open as the man fell down, but he was shot down. Curtis Fagan, flag goes down. And I believe that's coming back. You know what? I don't know. We couldn't see if Fagan's hands went to the back of Paul Jones. Did you hear it in basketball all the time? The makeup call? There is definitely space created very quickly. And you see him trying to keep a straight face there? <laughs> I just fell down. Yeah. You hear that? Coach Stoop said he just fell down. Oh, the guy's not allowed to fall down. It didn't look like a big push, but it doesn't have to be. Cause, yeah, the hands go in the back right there. And you know what? He falls down, but the hands went in the back first. That's a 15 yard penalty. Good call by the officiating crew. I don't know if Curtis Fagan's intent was to push off, but he's thinking, you know, I'm just going to steady myself. He's here. Now, if you can do that with your forearm, not that I've ever pushed off before, Never. but you get the forearm in the back, and then you don't extend the arm, you won't get the pass interference call. You're not as conspicuous when you were doing it. Back at the 35. Third and forever. And they pop it away from Quentin Griffin. A punting situation for the Sooners. Robinson on.
Long side backer. You can't say enough though about what this Oklahoma State defense has done today. Their energy level defensively is up high. Almost higher than the Sooners defensive. I mean, this is a great defensive ball game. Seen a few drives by Oklahoma State offensively, but both teams have played very well defensively. Now. And they're packing it in to come after. Will they get it? Going after Ferguson. Davis Bryant waits at the 25. Wind to the back of the punter. And it may find the end zone. No. What a hop for Oklahoma. It'll die inside the 10. Yeah, you can't you can't he hit knocked, a man like he that. He knocked the man back. Roy Williams hit him. They're trying to pull everything out, aren't they? Offense isn't scoring, so <laughs> why not? And you get a personal call, foul call here, and you just lose 15 yards. So not a very heads-up play. Bob Stoops trying to direct the official. Let's see if it paid off, though. Dead ball, personal foul against the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Interesting. Against the receiving team? Well, maybe Bob Stoops did it. It worked. Them. It worked for Bob Stoops. College football Saturday on. Those plays where Roy Williams comes in, he knocks the return man out of the way. The ball's not dead. The officials have not blown the ball dead. No. It's bouncing around. It's starting to come backwards. It has not been touched by either team. And there's T.D. Bryant trying to move out of the way. And he gets a friendly little love tap from Roy Williams, who then picks up the ball after touch T.D. Bryant. First oh. and 10 Cowboys are on 26. Bell won't turn the corner. Thomas down low. Yeah, Kalmus makes that play, but onside. Jimmy Wilkerson, right. and Tommy Harris make that play. Jimmy Wilkerson just shut it, bracketed it inside all the way. And then when he fired, and Oklahoma State, don't forget, biding their time. And the crowd is starting to sense we need a big defensive play from our golden defense. Oklahoma State is going to have the wind at their back and a big wind. Fields finding his man, Davis Bryant, across the 35. He's got the first down, tripped up by Teddy Lehman. He is getting great pass protection on his backside from Mikado and Kyle Eaton. And you're going to see Roy Williams come, get picked up again by Eaton. And you see number 93, Corey Klein, in the middle. It's a zone blitz. So you drop a defensive tackle back into coverage while you only rush four. Go ahead, bring the extra guy. I'd rather put the pressure on the red, on the freshman quarterback than confuse him with the coverage. Up man in the eye formation. Mike Denard. Nothing doing. Jimmy Wilkerson, they will go by Luke Phillips. And win Aiden with the win at the back. Phillips, a career best 52 yarder. And other than the short Oklahoma drive after turnover, all the scoring has been with the win. Second and ten for Fields out of the gun. Underneath, uh, not available. I don't like that. Trying to get Milosevic involved, the tight end, but Roy Williams with a stick on the play. You know, just throwing the ball in his area. Number one, I don't like that. I didn't like the throw. Really pumped up. You see 15 passes broken up. That's an Oklahoma Sooners record. Offensive linemen have to hold hands because they can't hear the snap count. Third and long. Great pocket protection. Fields in trouble. Can he get to the marker? Ripped down at the midfield stripe. He's got the first down. Held on to the football. Teddy Lehman, you could see him try to spike might it out. Have dislocated his left thumb. Look, he's holding his left thumb coming off. Yes. Was that from the Lehman spike? That's from the Lehman spike. Oh. And Corey Heineke is down on the field. If you're weak at heart, you might want to turn away. When he comes over, right, you see the ball come out, and when the hand hits the ground, boom, ah. See that, Joel, here in the broadcast booth, that left thumb right there? That's why it doesn't straighten out. Same thing happened to it. I saw a poor guy who's not been in since the third series of the game hustling into action.
Let's check in with Eric Clements. Eric. All right, time now for a game summary as they're working on the uh, left thumb of Josh Field, state's leading receiver with five catches for 87 yards and uncharacteristic two turnovers for Oklahoma in this game, five for the contest, and I guess you could term it a defensive struggle, guys. 68 more yards, Eric. Now for Oklahoma saw, State, 228 to 160. You saw Josh Fields run off the field, and the play was stopped because Corey Heineke's down. So if they can attend to him, get that thumb pulled out, maybe 10 for at least a snap. He's been their starting quarterback. Had the high ankle sprain last week. A couple of times he's had leg injuries this year. And puts it on the ground. It's covered, though, fortunately, by Tatum Bell. But that's the way it starts for the sophomore from Lawton, Oklahoma. Well, Les Miles told us he won a competition coming in next year for all 22 positions. He will definitely get it. And Brian Phillips, the right guard, is stepping down, and he steps on the left foot of Pogai. He's trying to get away from center. Pogai, two INTs early in the ball game. Spent most of it on the sideline. Probably didn't think he'd get a chance to get back on the field. Big kid, 6'4", 225. Loss of four. Blitz coming. They didn't pick it up. Roy Williams, untouched. Tatum Bell down. You can see it. He timed it perfectly. You know, sometimes the whole offensive unit can be affected by one player going out. And this team seemed to be playing with such a confidence, with such a swagger, while Josh Fields was in. Now, Grant. Final 20 seconds of the third quarter. And he calls his own number. If he goes left, there's plenty of room. A running lane over there. He went right with a flag down on the play. Called delay of game. So we had no snap there. We'll have to put some seconds on the clock then if we had no snap. All three timeouts remaining for both Stoops and Miles, the Sinners and Cowboys. It is a chilly late afternoon in Northern Oklahoma. Here we go. Third and 24. Safety blitz. Pick it up this time. Pogai going for the bundle and overshooting everybody in the neighborhood of Rashawn Woods. You don't want to touch it. You go, I know they're going to pull this out, but I don't want to touch it. I would stay away from a tie shot on that. Second and four. Stumbling into Bell. Bell bouncing out. Big yardage. Tatum Bell with the first down. Across the midfield, strike to the 49. Will we get an upset this afternoon in Norman? Average again on the hit. FedEx ground numbers where Tatum Bell has gone over the first three quarters, James. And sometimes that's deceiving because a run that starts to the left can end up in the middle. But it's been nice little consistent chunks, and they've kept knocking on the door. That's 19 carries right there in the first three quarters, and then two carries to start the fourth quarter. And you watch teams with young players, and at some point they grow up. And it looks like today the young Cowboys are trying to grow up. 66 yards on the ground for Bell after 88 last week. Swars into the game. Now, did he Tip lose it? Yes, he lost it at the end of the play. On his way down. Trying to fight a little too hard. Look and Roy Williams Roy there Williams. with the ball and the strip. <laughs> so Les Miles with momentum on his side. The wind in his back. And unfortunately for the Cowboys, another turnover. Minus 17 yards rushing. Two minutes gone in the fourth quarter. This late in the ball game, but they get the turnover. The fourth given away by Oklahoma State. Griffin barely oh, tripped that's up. A great Huge play, play by, by Dwayne Levels, the middle linebacker. He doesn't get him. He's got at least a first down. Because they make the right call there. A perfect call. I mean, it looks like you're going to go right with something. They come with a quick option down the line. And Dwayne Levels, who's already snuck up into line, has to cover the quarterback and the pitch man because the safety is 20 yards deep. A gain of four, caught it second and six. Again, the option. Hibble, his most effective run. 
Terrence Robinson bowls him over. He's near a first down. It'll depend upon the spot. It's interesting, though, as short as they are at the quarterback position, he's being exposed. Oh, hey, you got to get out there and make plays. It's not about making sure this guy's healthy. So they'll bring in the chains. 12.09 to play. Oklahoma wants to get at least a field goal out of the possession, leading by only four. Now, this is a very good chain gang crew. This is maybe one of the fastest chain gang crews I've seen all year. These guys have obviously been over on the track doing a little sprint work for the game. You like their canter. Uh, these guys, they, they move. They get a good arm pump there, get back in position, get set up. Because the players don't want to wait all day. Would you expect anything out of the state of Oklahoma or Texas for that matter? No, that's why they're called Sooners, because they got here first. So they're shot the first down. I got to do homework on the outside to keep up with you. <laughs> shot by inches. Three for 13 today. Credit to the defense. Well, he's changing the play here. Well, he, he had the quarterback draw called here, and he didn't like it. Defensive line. Early timeout in Norman. It's been that way all day, though. The offensive unit of the Sooners. They have not been able to move the ball against the Cowboys defense. Hibble, it'll depend upon the spot. He tried to sneak earlier and it didn't work. He only needed about three, four inches this time, though. Remember back to the Kansas game when Nate Hibble couldn't pick up the quarterback sneak against Kansas, got replaced in the lineup by Josh White. To begin with. Now they've got Ronaldo work. Yeah, but they have, he hasn't touched it yeah, You're right, he hasn't touched the ball. And that's a guy that scored four touchdowns over the last five games. He scored last week at Texas Tech, he just hasn't touched it. He got it. By the nose. <laughs> Photo finish. <laughs> wonder how our microphone got in there. <laughs> I think that was, I saw Eric's thumb in that shot. <laughs> He is really racing up and down there. 1148 <laughs> counting. First down. Outside of the 42. Working into the wind. If you're thinking about a field goal by Duncan. Great penetration on the outside. Richmond got in. Down low. Greg Richmond again, the sophomore from Douglas High School in Oklahoma City. Coming up later tonight. Center State. Well, Probably better than the Celtics. Celtics are playing pretty good this year. Pretty well. Yeah, but wide open Trent Smith. That is the most available. They've had a wide receiver or a tight end today, and they've got a first down to the 26. Levels may have hit the dust. No, yeah, oh, he did. He went down big time. But a nice move by Trent Smith to take the defensive player off his feet. Watch Levels. He's going out. He's going, this is my man right there. I, oh, he got to turn and go. And, no cleats in that shape. 17 yards on the completion, and that is like a 70-yard pass today. Oh, yeah. It has been that tough for Oklahoma to move the football. Now they're in field goal range. Griffin sliding down inside the 20. Good spot all the way to the 17. Quentin, he got almost nine. Quentin Griffin seems to find an extra gear around the goal. I believe it was against Texas a year ago. Did he score six touchdowns against Texas in that big game in the Cotton Bowl? He just seems to get close and think, I got to get in. I gotta. And you know what? His eyes are closer to the goal line than all the other players. It, he's only five seconds. It was your Big 12 mark until yeah. yesterday's Colorado ball game. Second in the yard. Griffin only needs one pitch to tackle. Hangs on to it. They try to strip it away. He's inside the five. Elbert Craig with the stop. First and goal. Good job up front by the offensive line in getting the Cowboys off their feet. When you cut block, guys, they're not going to get back and make the play against you. Look, going down, one, two, three, four. Cowboys on the ground. And then everybody's tackling them up high because you can't really get down low enough. And at 5'7", 195, 200 pounds, he is a stronger runner than what you'd ever imagine. First penetration like this for the Sooners in the second half. Griffin again. He lost a yard. Takes a shot to the chops at the five. Well, great job at the point of attack by Kareem Smith holding his ground. 
These are not big defensive line. Kareem Smith, 6'3", 245 pounds. They've been beating Oklahoma with quickness. And when you get down inside the five-yard line, it takes strength. So you have to get good leverage, stay low, come off the ball hard. And they took over on the turnover. That's how they score the first time points off the turnover. But that was only a 17-yard drive. Now they're trying to make it a 53-yard drive with their second touchdown of the game. Fade, corner, busted play completely. Breakdown of communication, and the ball was way out of bounds. Now, it's funny, Josh Norman was supposed to get to the fade there. We had a slant pattern coming on the top by Savage, and Norman couldn't get off the football. And the big guy should be able to beat some a little guy off the field. Well, it'll be a huge stand and stop for Oklahoma State. If they can hold them to a field goal, it's only a seven-point ball game. Do you throw it here, or do you try and get to Quentin Griffin? I may run the option to get to Griffin. It's worked before. Up top for wow. Bennett. Fagan belted. Big Nobody time. Craig. All over the sophomore from Oklahoma City. Because he read the quarterback's eyes. If you're in zone coverage, you move as the quarterback's eyes move. And this ball is thrown a little high. And when the receiver has to go up to get it, he's exposed. Fagans can't come down with it. That was a jolt from Craig on Fagan. And now Duncan. He's got a 23-yarder. It's going to be 22-yard try. Only two more than an extra point. Tough angle. And it's a touchdown lead now for Oklahoma. An 11 play, 48 yard drive, the 22 yard field goal. And what a job at the Cowboys after a couple of big plays. The run by Griffin and the throw to tight end Trent Smith. They didn't quit. They got the job done after it was first and goal at the four. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By Kia Sarah, one company, countless solutions. And by Nissan. Driven. Well, remind you of last season. A 12-7 victory for Oklahoma. They needed a goal line stand in Stillwater to preserve an undefeated season, a shot of the Big 12 title game, and an opportunity, and they succeeded there in the national championship. If you're going to beat a team, what you need to be able to do is take away something that they do really well. And coming into this ball game, the best thing that the Oklahoma State Cowboys did on paper was return kickoffs. What they've done, they've taken the ball out of the hands of Chris Massey, who came into the game leading the country in kickoff returns. You saw the scoring drive there, 12 plays, 48 yards. Into the win. A bound by Duncan. And Massey wanted to bring it out. He was held in, though, by his teammate, John Lewis. Don't forget, tomorrow, the NFL activity on Fox all starts with Fox NFL Sunday, the best pregame show around. Then the 49ers and Jeff Garcia, 7-2, taking on Peyton Manning. Man, the Colts just trying to stay in the playoff on. Ricky Williams and the Saints also visiting the Patriots. Coverage all starts to noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, right here on Fox. And what started as a windswept day has now really become pretty mild, so you can throw the ball. Wind is still at the back, though, of Josh Fields hitting him on the slant. John Lewis, big play, all the way across the 40 to the 45-yard line. I mean, Josh Fields is just eyeing up this receiver. He's waiting for him to clear the first zone, and he just guns the ball in here. A little look off to the left. He knows where he's going to go with it, but he comes back, and Kalmus just overruns the play. Kalmus has his eyes in the backfield looking at the receiver who's coming out of the backfield. He needs to locate the guy down the field. Gain of 25 for the Cowboys' first snap. Lewis after the play fake. Perfect throw, but Milosevic could not hang on. The redshirt freshman out of Louisville, Texas. Milosevic is still struggling with that knee injury. We saw him get popped in the first half because here's a kid with great hands, and he had plenty of room to catch this ball and secure the catch. And see, I thought he caught the ball and ran and then got 
the ball knocked out as he was going out of bounds. Only three points so far. We just saw it here in the second half. Uh, the Duncan field goal. His second of the game. Seven point lead for the Sooners. 8.23 away from going to their second straight Big 12 title game. Blitz on the edge. Bell caught up with it. And Rashawn Woods breaking a tackle for another first down. Running basically, James, looked like the same pattern. Yeah, and, and a team that prides itself on not missing tackles is not making tackles when they need to. Derek Strait right there on the coverage. Rashawn Woods, it's just about determination. He's determined. And you see the coaching staff frustrated because they're in position to make the plays. If you're in position, you make the play. That's Brent Venables. Mike Stoops, the very vocal one. The code offensive coordinators for Bob Stoops. Interesting configuration out of the gun. And now they'll get Bell out of the backfield. And get Roy Williams away from the quarterback. John Lewis, good yardage, another first down. Knocked out near the 30 by Derek Strait. Opening up the playbook a little bit. Now, when you read their uh, press guide, you read that Tatum Bell is the fastest guy in the 40 at 4.63. John Lewis must have run about 4.37 because he can scoot. He can scoot. They get him that ball in that quick bubble screen. This kid can go. And he is a nice compliment for Rashawn Woods on the other side. You get a speed guy and a possession guy. Mature young man, played a couple of years Hines Junior College in Mississippi. That's play action. Beautiful play fake. Got Young going for the tying score. Jabal knocked away. Young stopped on the route just a little bit. Roy Williams got back in the play. You're not going to fool him very often. He was it's gliding with Brandon Everidge. Trying to get that ball at its highest point. Comes down on his back a little bit. They gave him a lot of time to get back up because normally a player stays down that long. They want him off the field. What about the play fake? True freshman right out of high school in Stillwater. Yeah. But it was a one receiver route. They thought they'd fool him with the play action. Didn't fool Roy Williams. Second and ten. Working downwind. Pump fake. Going for the bundle. Into the corner. Knocked away. It was Williams. No. Jeff Lutton, Antonio Perkins, 28, not 38, taking it away from Rashawn Woods. I tell you what, Rashawn Woods, every time you throw him the football, it looks like he's going to come down with it. He's just so poised, and that's at the highest point. And he gets those hands in there and fights it away. Perkins only a redshirt freshman from Lock, Oklahoma. He started early in the year, and then Andre Wolfwood, before his injury, he moved into the starting lineup, and then coming back, Antonio Perkins once again. Woods needs to learn one thing. He needs to learn to use his body a little more to bump the defender, get some separation. Third and ten. Williams off the edge, and it's knocked away by Calvis. Trying to get it to Rashawn Woods. We've got a flag on the play, though. One, two, three, four defenders. He tried to thread that ball in between. It's on Oklahoma State. Part of the snap, full start on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. That, that helps you Oklahoma State. You've got no play, and you still need seven points out of this drive. So now a new snap on third and 15, and you've already got a 52-yard field goal from your place kicker downwind today. Put a couple extra ticks on the clock. It also gives Fields the opportunity to go over to the sideline to talk to his coach. Yep. Sometimes you go over there and those coaches have a blank expression this time of ball game, though. Inside of eight minutes left. And Oklahoma hang on. Texas in the wings waiting. Colorado knows where they're headed next weekend. Fields over the middle. Low throw, but blanket coverage. Teddy Lehman getting downfield to stay with Davis Bryant. When you can blitz Roy Williams and allow your middle linebacker to run with a speedy receiver down the field, you've got such a great advantage. Look at this defense is built totally around speed. There's not a player out there who doesn't run well, who doesn't move well to the football. Well, Luke Phillips, two of two today. 14 of 16 on the season, a new career best. He tries to match it with a 52-yarder. And officially, they gave him a 53. 
This will be from 52. Down the middle it goes. That was good from over 60 plus. The wind is definitely a factor today, halfway through the final 15 minutes of regulation. And once again, a four point game. I mean, he just hits this really solidly, and a lot of this has to be on account. I made one early. I know I can drill this thing. But at 13 to 9, that field goal doesn't help you. And obviously, if they go 16 9, seven point sides ball game up. Well, the two defensive units are the story tonight, and we have seen some serious sticks. Well, it has been a physical ball game, starting with Roy Williams moving on, and then on the defensive side of the ball for Oklahoma State, Dwayne Levels and company, they put some big hits on them. And Quentin Griffin getting blasted out of bounds by Massey. There's Elbert Craig on the goal line, so there'll be a couple of guys uh, in the ice tub after this ball game is over. 292 yards of total offense for Oklahoma State. They've had it five more minutes than Oklahoma, who's only had 217 yards. So the fourth ranked team of the nation leaning heavily upon their defensive unit. Savage with the wind at the back of the kicker, Phillips won't have an opportunity to bring it back. So the Sooners once again deep in their own territory, and now they've got to hang on to the football, which they have done. Barrett head of field operations, Andrea Barians. This is our final Big 12 contest on Fox Sports Net, at least our Saturday night game. Thanks to a great group of people. Larry Rogers, our tech manager. I could go down a list to dozens. As they catch up with Hibble once again, no shock and a loss and a sack. Back to the 15, Greg Richmond. But thanks to a great crew, James. It's been a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. it really has been. And it, uh, tough to keep up with Clemens, so that's the problem. Well, he's everywhere. We, we need just cameras all around the stadium to follow his whereabouts. And we kind of like put him in a little box up here and just have Eric Vision. You see all the time. Kevin Weiberg, Big 12 Commissioner. Tim Allen, Associate Commissioner. You're Johnny just trying Duncan, to get Bo Carter. To the Big 12 Championship game Thank next week. Thank you, gentlemen, for your support and assistance all year long. Second and 14 for Hibble. Another one Ooh, setting up his receiver, Josh Norman, and almost picked dead. off. Yes. Kevin Williams with the pop. That was cage to cage, wasn't it? Yeah, but that ball almost bounced into the hands of Greg Richmond at the tail end of the play. Oh. And now the receiver's looking at the quarterback like, what are you doing? Shallow cross. Didn't you see those guys? Uh, shallow cross, and I got an interior lineman on me. <laughs> 638. Frustration for that man, Mike Mangino. You're going to lay back in zone, but you still need pressure from your rush guys. Only a three-man rush. Hibble with all day. Still sensational coverage to Here comes field. the pressure. How does he do on the run? A broken tackle. Will they get to the marker? No. Only to the 26. Paul Jones has come up with big tackles all game long, and he took down Josh Norman that time. Great job by the defensive secondary for Oklahoma State. The hardest thing in the world to do is to contain the wide receivers when the quarterback starts to scramble. He moved to his left, all the way back to his right. They still maintain their coverage. How big is his punt? First team all big 12 -er. Jeff Ferguson, very best in the nation. He's had one block this year. Going after the punter. They're not doubling up on the gunner. Got close, didn't they? Davis Bryant, can he make a miss? Got away from the first one. And gets a wall over to the sideline. Needs one more block. Won't be there. And the they punter. converge, but a great job of bringing it back by Terrence Davis Bryant. Jeff Super Ferguson. field position all the way to the 41. Two more. Two first downs. They're close to it. their place kicker oh, yeah. once it's again. Sweating time in Norman. As Sarah continues on Fox Sports Net, Joel Myers, James Loft, and Eric Clemens back in Norman. No one could have expected this. Now, you know, when we were riding over in the car, I said 13 to 9 with five minutes to go. Didn't I? You said five minutes to go in the first quarter. Oh. 534. Oh, to play. Mike Stutes had an earful for his defensive unit. They have missed some tackles. You talked about it, a group that very rarely is guilty of that. Tatum Bell. 
Shut down and a loss of a yard to the 40 yard line. In on the hit early Tommy Harris the true freshman along with Rocky Kalmus. So the clock running against Oklahoma State. And also running against Texas. Oklahoma's upset. Texas takes the Big 12 South title and goes to the championship game next weekend against Colorado. Empty backfield. Blitz on field, hot read. And diving was the backer layman, and he almost did it again. I just don't like that throw that they're attempting because it's also the defensive back. They read that they have time to step in front and get the ball. And, and layman, they're going to watch the film and they're going to think, you know, if this ball's not blocked, we may get it on the outside. A little pressure on the quarterback, trying to dig after that left thumb there. But on third downs today. Oklahoma State is only three for 15. This is third and 11 to their own 40. Wind at the back of quarterback Josh Fields. Double move works again. Woods has it knocked away though. What a play by Matt McCoy. McCoy. Interception early in the ball game. A saving tackle against Tatum Bell. And that time knocking the ball away from Rashawn Woods. You know, and that's his play to make. He's playing the deep half of the field. Ball, ball, ball. Knock it away at the highest point. If there's not as much air under it, James, uh, get there. Yeah, but you've got to drop it in like that. I mean, that ball, the only guy who could throw that better was Dan Marino. He knew how to zip that ball and get it over the short defender. Cowboys can't take advantage of the field position. As Elder punts it away to Fagan, calling for the fair catch. No, shift it over. And he's dropped just outside of the 20. Looked like he almost put his arm up. Roger Bomback, the first one down there. Fagan with a nice little slip over to the left side. Is it the Sooners at their own 21? Now can they run out the clock with 4.37 to play? On the ground, Oklahoma. 26 carries for only nine yards. Hebel with his tight end hooking up once again. Trent Smith, he's down to the 28. You know, this is the essence of their offense. You know, you would think, okay, grind the clock out. Hey, a short pass is the same as a short run. If they had just handed it off up the middle and run for five yards, it would still be ticking the same way it is. This ball club needs to make two first downs. They'd love to take three downs to do it each time because that would bleed more time off the clock. Blitz from the outside. Hibble doesn't see it. Uh, Hung on to the football, though, despite Marcus Jones on the blind side. And if Hibble reads man-to-man -man coverage, he's thinking, okay, man-to-man -man coverage, what does that equal? That equals blitz. I need to get rid of the football. I mean, that is in, an incredible play. Just a nice job and bearing down on him. Marcus Jones is coming after him. A loss of 10, James. Now, to Hibble's credit, he didn't throw an interception. And he but didn't. you don't want to take the sack. He hung on to it. What a jolt. Out of the gun on third and long. Pocket holds up. And behind a sliding wide receiver is trying to get into Curtis Fagan. And you stop the clock. 316 left. Field goals are out of the question now for Oklahoma State. Injured Cowboy, they're helping him off. Llewellyn Brown, their junior from White House, Texas. Boy, they've had some great defensive effort from the guys up front. I mean, you're getting a three-man rush right there. Llewellyn Brown, Kareem Smith. We've seen Kevin Williams, Greg Richmond. They have really played. And Clay Cole in the first half, that yes. one big sack he had. So. If you're handing out game balls and Oklahoma pulls out a victory in this game, obviously everybody on the team will get one, but the defensive guys would get two. Davis Bryant just had a sensational return of a little over 15 yards. Bergson in a high snap. Keeps it low, tries to because of the win. And what a roll for the Sooners. Big time, an extra five, six, seven yards. So now Oklahoma State, with three timeouts left, gets it at the 35, but only 3.05 remaining. Later tonight, Rick Pitino, Louisville Cardinals, Oregon Ducks, they get together at the rope.
From the 35, first and 10. Tatum Bell. Dropped by Derek Strait. Got him low after a gain of only a couple. So this is the drive of the season for the Oklahoma Sooners defensively and for the Cowboys offensively as Colorado's already in the Big 12 championship next weekend in Dallas. Oklahoma wins. They match up with the Buffaloes. They lose Texas on their way. Initially down in Austin, this is a non-factor watching this game. I'd say television sets are in tune right now. Fields with plenty of room to see downfield. Woods with the grab. He got a foot down. He did. He got first, first down. foot down. That'll stop it going out of bounds. Saves the timeout. 2.29 to play. And this ball is thrown on a rope right in the hands. One foot. Second foot doesn't have to come down, but it does. NFL move for Sean Woods, who's only a sophomore. So they've got it in Sooner territory at the 48. And I believe that Woods has gone over 1,000 yards for the season. He had 894 coming in and has a buck 15 now. Over the second to do that, Hartley Dykes did it. With better than 1,200 back in 88. Fields with the pocket holding up. Taking it in, Terrence Davis Bryant, but in an awkward position where he couldn't advance. Only a yard or so. And they're in their hurry-up offense here. You see the players going straight to a different formation. Call it second and ten. Middle screen. Tatum Bell couldn't find any room. Timeout. Timeout. Teddy Lehman finished up. He was brought down by But Barry Holloman really stuffed the play. So a timeout called. That's the first of the half for Oklahoma State with a minute 58 left. Whatever, we can handle that. But you cannot take a sack here. Fields out of the huddle with his coaches from the shotgun. Locate Jimmy Wilkerson, number 45. Find out where he's rushing from. He's their most effective pass rusher. And Roy Williams walked up and now is backing off the line. Stays away from the blitz. Straight four man rush. Fields using the middle of the field. Jump ball. Grab made the 15 and take it away. That ball. Davis he Bryant's got running. it at the 15, taking it away from Roy Williams. He what came a grab. Over the back of Superman and came down with that football. That is a tremendous effort. This ball is thrown up for grabs down the middle. Roy Williams is thinking, this is coming straight in my hands. And you can hear the heartbeat of every Sooner fan in the stadium. First and 10, ball down to the 14. Burrow, the only one in the backfield. Fields, fade, corner. Rashawn Woods, jump for a touchdown, Oklahoma State. Pulled it on Derek Strait. Woods coming down with it. A year ago, Derek Strait was the hero on fourth down. Today on first down, for now, Rashawn Woods is the hero. Not many here from Stillwater. But well, what a celebration for them. It's just a terrific play. The coverage is there. He get, and you know, we talked about this young man earlier with the hands. Everything in his hands, he got the first foot in, he got the second foot in. That catch is good on Sundays. The extra point, three-point lead, Oklahoma State. That was big, to say the least. Still the shooters, plenty of time, two timeouts remaining. A field goal to tie it up. You've got a minute and 36 seconds, two timeouts. You've got 17 straight wins at home here at stake. You have time to run eight to 10 plays easily. Here's a look at the touchdown. This ball is just thrown up, not for grabs, but thrown up where you believe that your player has the confidence to come down with it. And Les Miles on the sideline thinking, yeah, I called it, but it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. He threw it anyway. It's there. He's got it. Yeah! Yeah! See, and, he, you know, he's supposed to be going, go for one. No. No, he's enjoying the moment right now. What a way if they can hang on to go into recruiting in December. 
as everybody, like the Oklahoma Sooners, other teams getting ready for their bowl preparation. Well, now, now Cowboy coaches getting ready to recruit coming off a win over Oklahoma. He just told everybody, get back on the sideline. We got the warning earlier. You get everybody back. Everybody get back. Now, kicking the ball downwind. Savage, unless Phillips Slip should not touch it. It should be Oklahoma getting it at their own 20-yard line. Low-line drive. Keep it away. Savage will bring it back a couple of yards in. Can't turn the corner, though. Buried from behind. Making the play for the Cowboys. It was Bajima. And their the tight end. flag on Trent Smith. There was a holding. illegal block. Let's not forget about what Josh Fields has meant to this team. Last year, the quarterback for the Sooners calling signals, or the quarterback for the Cowboys calling signals for Stillwater High School. Wow. And probably not recruited by the Sooners. All you got to do is recruit all the good players. On the return team, half the distance to the goal. First down. Eric Clemens has it down there. You see, the wind is not as much of a factor down here on the field as it was earlier in the game. In fact, it's almost still. The flags on both goalposts of the uprights are pretty limp now. So it should not have a negative effect on the passing game as Oklahoma tries to get in position for tying field goal, guys. You need 65 yards to get there. The deflection, middle of the pack. Leaping up, Smith was in the neighborhood. Lowell and Brown could have gotten his hand on it. I believe it was Brown. Now, don't forget, he was limping off the field after the last series. Yeah, but, I mean, you've got adrenaline from the Rashawn Woods touchdown. There's nothing that's going to keep you off the field right now if you can limp out there. I wonder what's going on in Austin, Texas right now. Oh, man. Wow. Matt Second Brown is sitting in that big office going, yes. <laughs> we got practice. Four-man rush. Hibble flushed out. Nothing doing, trying in the neighborhood of Antoine Savage with Kevin Williams breathing down his back. Okay, we talked earlier about four down territory for the Cowboys. Joel, this is four down territory for the Sooners. You don't pick it up on third down, you have to go for it again. You don't have a choice. Minute 22 to play. Oklahoma State coming in with confidence after their first conference win last week at Baylor and the first win in Big 12 play for their new head coach, Les Miles. So they felt pretty good coming in this weekend. They've played like it, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Straight four. Almost to safety. Hibble for the bundle into the Oklahoma State bench. He scrambled around. I know he didn't see him. He had Quentin Griffin 10 yards in front of him, wide open. He went for the big play. The big play. Now he's thinking, okay, we need 10 yards. We have to have it. Fourth down of the season in front of the Sooners. And you know what? If I am Oklahoma, I freeze him. I call timeout right here. If I'm Oklahoma State, I stop the clock. Just like you do against a field goal kicker. The ball game. Fourth and ten. And it's deflected. That should do it. They get it done in the trenches where they've done it all game long. The guys in the pits won it for Oklahoma State. Now, two things you can do here if you're Oklahoma. Let them run it in on first down. So they have to kick off to you. You get the ball back, get a touchdown, onside kick, field goal, you tie it up. Was it Williams right up the gut? Or Kareem Smith? I think that's Brown, big Brown. That's the second time he got it in four snaps. See, if I am Oklahoma State, as crazy as that sounds here, what I would do on first down, I'd take a knee to see what Oklahoma will do with their timeout situation. Now they're trying to get it up before delay a game. They're going to take a knee. Timeout Oklahoma. They have one remaining. Stop it with 65 seconds left. Excellent job coaching. But it all gets set up when you have a guy who can make plays. 
And I think the Big 12 all coaches team came out this year, this week in the newspaper, Rashawn Woods was on second team. I think he picked up that newspaper and he saw Justin Gage and Roy Williams on first team and he said, you know what? Okay, we'll show you guys who's the first team receiver. The biggest play, we talked about Eric Crouch and Roy Williams, their big plays. This, you know, everybody was talking about, can we send three Big 12 teams to the bowl championship series? You know what, fellas, it's not gonna happen because Nebraska is going down out that pitcher. So is Oklahoma going down out that pitcher. Up goes Texas. Though. Texas moves up around maybe that four slot. They took care of Texas A&M before a record crowd of 88,000 at Kyle Field, largest ever watch a football game in the state of Texas. Another knee coming. And Lewis, or making field rather smart to go back a couple of extra yards. Take a couple of extra seconds. And Oklahoma is out of timeouts. And you talk about the people in Austin, you get a little clarity in the picture in the state of Florida also. Well, they've got a, some work ahead of them. And they have some work in front Serious of them. But it, it's easy to do the work if you know it's in front of you, and you would have thought that that would have been the case for Oklahoma today, to come out strong, get some points on the scoreboard early, and take care of a team that, you know, really had no hope coming into this ballgame. That young man, though, and you, you mentioned it, he put Woods in a position where he could make the play. We talk about players growing up. Josh Woods, a true freshman, 231 yards passing, the huge touchdown at the end of the ball game. And last year this time, trying to get a date for the prom. Three-point lead. Third down, another name. Now, let's see when they start the play clock. They're gonna have to give the ball up if they don't kick a field goal here. This play was over at 57 seconds. They haven't started it yet. Which is incredible. I don't know why they're waiting so long. They let an extra 10 seconds go off of that clock. So a 20 second difference between the game clock and the play clock. That stands between Bob Stoops and his first loss at home as the head coach of the Sooners. Now you don't need to take the time out here. Go and take the five yards. They use the timeout. And I think Stoops lost a second there. It should be 21 seconds on the clock. Because it was 45 when the play started. And if 25 seconds have run off the clock, that means that you use 25 seconds, it would be a delay of game. Late afternoon chill. And tough if you're a Sooner fan right now. Darkness settling in. On a custom position for Stoops and his staff. It'll be a second loss this season. 10 and 2 record. You know, in the uh, headlines of the newspaper today, they were talking about a rare season where they get to win 11 regular season games. It was a foregone conclusion. I watched one of the little no local uh, sports shows on Fox Sports Net, and the local riders from the Stillwater area and the Norman area were all conceding this ball game to the Sooners. Well, I forgot to tell the players that. 19 straight overall, 17 under Bob Stoops. Now, they won't go for the field goal. I put Deshaun Woods out there and throw it to him again. That may be the play. Now, he's going to just chew up some clock and slide down. So gives it back to the Sooners with 16 seconds left at their own 26-yard line. How do you like that call? You've got to use the sidelines and get out of bounds. You cannot expect to throw a pass, have them stop the clock, get up on the ball, and take a snap. Now, they're celebrating, but you need to go out and you need to make a couple plays here. A 20-yard pass completion would take about five seconds off the clock. That would put the ball around midfield. Another 20 yards, put you at the 35-yard line. And there you can attempt the 52-yard. From the 26. 
Only a three man rush. Hibble using a ton of time. Up for grabs it goes. And it's intercepted. That'll do it. Picked off by the Cowboys. And coming up, Marcus Jones, who had a phenomenal game. The senior from Stillwater. What a way for him to close out his career. And in a game where we thought defense would rule the day, that has been the case. Although it's been the guys in the orange and white who have ruled the day defensively. Marcus Jones, Albert Craig, Craig Massey, up front, Kevin Williams, Kareem Smith, LeWaylon Brown. Fantastic ball game. Unless Miles is about to get wet. I'll tell you that right now. Well, he's about to get wet. He had to wait all season to get his first Big 12 Conference win last weekend. And now he's got two in a row. The snap and it's over. And they can celebrate in Stillwater. What an upset. A shock in Norman this afternoon. The bath for Les Miles. And that feels good. Great defensive battle between two solid coaches. Downstairs, let's check in. Eric Clemens. Get the team and tell them to okay. right there. Boy. Coach Miles, you're all wet and everything. Tell me briefly, how much does a victory like this mean to you in this program? This is a uh, this is a great team that we played. Uh, traditional uh, rival. Um, Obviously, it was our biggest win. So, talk, you talked. You told me at halftime you needed execution, and for the guys to go out and play hard. That last drive, that last touchdown pass, you had the execution you needed. Talk about Rashawn Woods and that play for him. Well, you know, Rashawn's played big for us in every game and every scrimmage since we've gotten here. It's very appropriate that he'd make the play that wins the game. You guys, I mean, you came in heavy underdogs and so forth. What was your message to your team coming out here tonight and playing this game? This team believes they're a good football team. They finally got an opportunity to show somebody else. You got to see you tonight. later. I'm going right. to see these guys. All right. <laughs> Les Miles, and you can understand how intense and how happy and how proud he is of his football team tonight. Guys? All right, Eric, <laughs> thank you. So Oklahoma State did not have the lead in the game until there was a minute and a half to play. Rashawn Woods, who set a single season reception record, breaking the old mark by Hartley Dykes back in 1988. Great hands. And we saw that all game. That was his eighth catch of the afternoon. Yeah, I can't tell you how impressed I am with this young man. He made plays. I saw him run through tackles, pick up third downs. But a really impressive performance by Josh Fields coming off the bench. After Pogai couldn't get anything going, here comes a guy against the best defense in the country, and maybe rated number three. But when you look at the players, Calmus, Williams, Harris, and he pulled off maybe the biggest upset this weekend in college football because yesterday Colorado whipping up on Nebraska, that was something. Now, what was really a surprise was the way Oklahoma could not move the ball against Oklahoma State. Let's face it, we know how good the Oklahoma Sooner defensive unit is, but for Oklahoma State's defense to come up the way they did, that was really the difference in the ball game. It really was. They got pressure early. We talked about their 4-2-5 defense. They went to a 3-2-6 defensive look, and I think that they really befuddled Ivo while he was on the field. Mark Mangino put in some good plays, but he just couldn't find the right guy to throw to. And then when they started to put pressure on him, boy, things really started to collapse around the Oklahoma quarterback quickly. A day that none of us will ever forget in Norman, Oklahoma. When we return, we are going to be joined by the head coach of the celebrating right now, Texas Longhorns. We'll talk to Mac Brown in just a moment. All power toothbrushes are not created equal. Sonicare. It has patented sonic technology and combines high speed bristle motion with dynamic cleaning action. So effective, Sonicare removes 80% of stains, getting your teeth whiter and healthier in 28 days guaranteed. See for yourself or ask your dentist about Sonicare. Do they bowl in Italy? Do they bowl in fourth ranked Oklahoma 16 13 Joel Myers back with James Lofton. We're joined now by the head coach of the Texas Longhorns who's on his way to the Big 12 title game. It's the South Division winners Mac Brown. Mac congratulations. Tell us the way you felt things were going to go going into the game. And did you watch it with your staff. Where were you watching the game. 
Well, Gerald, I've been at home all afternoon watching all the ball games, and after la yesterday's game with uh, Colorado and Nebraska, uh, such a great ball game, but uh, surprising to some, not us, because we played Colorado before. Uh, you see Michigan today get beat. Uh, you really don't know in this crazy game of college football what's going to happen, and, and uh, Oklahoma's got a great team, but you got to give a lot of credit to Oklahoma State today because they played their hearts out, and they just hung in there until they had a chance to win. Mac, you guys took care of business early against Texas a m and then you kind of sit back and you watch everything else unfold this weekend. Have you ever seen higher ranked teams topple like this late in the season? No, James, it's really crazy, and people have been asking us about the BCS for five weeks, and, and obviously we said we need to wait till the end, and the end's not even near where it should be, and people haven't given us a chance or Colorado a chance to be in this game for the last five weeks, so uh, it's exciting for us. I know it's exciting for Colorado, and, and both teams will put on a great show next Saturday in Dallas. Coach Brown, let's take a look at the game-winning play of the pass to Rashawn Woods, and why don't you give us your take on it, how you saw it develop? Well, if you look at it, it's perfect coverage, and, and Rashawn jumps up and just makes an unbelievable play. Uh, James was one of the great players in the NFL, and that's an NFL-type play, and we knew that because Rashawn scored the first 10 points really against us with a drive and a great catch on a post corner in the end zone. So I think he's one of the better receivers in the country that nobody's talking about right now. And now when you saw Oklahoma get the ball back afterwards, Oklahoma State's defense all day long was all over them. This spread offense really couldn't get things going. How about that? Well, Oklahoma State's got good players, and it's taken less a while to get them together. But when you've got a new staff, and I told him the day we played them, we played well, but I thought they played really well. And he has a young staff, but they're a very talented staff. Bill Clay uh, worked for my brother, worked with me at Southern Miss as a defensive coordinator at Oklahoma State. And he's one of the best in the country. He's been around a long time. and. and you let those guys hang around long enough, they learn the tricks, and, and Bill Clay is one of the best. Now, we've had some fun with the BCS system and the way that they come up with it, but obviously if number one and number four fall, and you guys are right on their heels, can you expect to be in the top four? Well, the thing we've got to do now, James, is what we've done all year. Uh, we had a game against Colorado where things happened uh, our way. Uh, we won the game handedly, but uh, they had some turnovers early in the game. They're obviously playing a lot better right now than they were then. So what we've got to do is beat Colorado, uh, and the BCS takes care of itself. Coach Brown, thank you for taking the time. Congratulations once again. Good luck in your matchup with Colorado. Thank you, guys. All right. Coach Mack Brown of the Texas Longhorns. What an exciting day in Norman, Oklahoma. Final score once again. Cowboys prevailing by three. And don't forget tonight, 10.30 Eastern. College basketball taking center stage. Louisville taking on Oregon to the Rose Garden. In Portland, Steve Fiziak, Marcus Johnson with the call. Now for James Loft and Eric Clemens, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. College football Saturday has been a presentation of Fox Sportsnet. We couldn't ask for a better matchup tonight in Norman, Oklahoma. So long, everybody. This holiday season.